Right, we are live. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the Kiwi Lads channel. We are here for the second test match between South Africa and the British and Irish Lions. There is a cat's tail in front of me at the moment. He was going to be joining me for this live stream, but he has decided to leave at this stage. But I hope you are all doing well. Hope you are all wide awake at this stage. We are sitting 3.30am here in New Zealand. I decided to have a little bit of build up heading into this match like we did for the first test match between these two sides. And that last test match, it was an interesting one. There have been a lot of talking points going into this game. But one thing is for sure, and it's going to be a physical game of rugby out there on the field once again. We are at Cape Town Stadium once again for this game as well. So, and this is a need to win it for the Springboks at this stage. The last time a side who did lose the first test match were able to win a series was 1989. So there is plenty on the line here for the Springboks, but also for the British and Irish Lions if they win this match. They have won the series, so it could go either way, and I am very excited. We have got Oi Oi and Drift Ronaldby, and also we have to, uh, got in the chat from Smithy Toilet, did you get any sleep, brother? I got like an hour or two. I feel like it's one of those ones I struggle to sleep before rugby matches, decided to go with a new tactic in trying to sleep beforehand. Um, but yeah, at this stage, I feel like hopefully by the time we are at kickoff, I will be wide awake for this one, and then I will be going straight back to bed. Afterwards, hey Hamish, um, am I the only one here? Says Katie Dixon. No, I think we've got a couple other people in the chat as well. But hey, howdy, hey, ho. Uh, hey, howdy, hey, ho. From Katie as well in the chat. She is ready for this match. And I feel like this one, it's going to be an interesting contest. Everyone's eyes, I feel, are going to be on the refereeing because of what happened in that last match. We have seen throughout the week, of course, Rassi Erasmus had ended up in that situation of releasing a long, a one hour long video kind of breaking down everything that Nick Berry and the TMO did wrong in that last match. So in this one, I think it is going to be Ben O'Keefe, if I'm not wrong. So the Kiwi, he will be nervous, uh, nervous sorry, going into this one. That is for sure. We have got the wave in the chat. And yes, lad, buzzing for this one. Hope you're well, brother, as well, says Slick Boy. Other than being a little bit asleep at this stage, I feel like I am slowly, uh, yeah, I am slowly waking up for this game as well. And we have got Go Box, says Katie Dixon and Rassi Erasmus clips coming through. As well, yeah, there was a lot of talk in the media about the battle of mind games between Warren Gatlin and Rassi Erasmus. They've just been in this war between each other. And it's going to be interesting who can get the better of it. If Rassi Erasmus' side here for the Springboks can get this win, it will make it 1-1. And then it will be going into the third game. But if the British and Irish Lions win this game, then it will be the first time that the Springboks have lost a British and Irish Lions test series since I believe it is 1997, before I was born. So there is plenty on the line for both of these sides. Like I mentioned, Adrian has got the emoji in the chat as well. Welcome into the live stream, mate. Thank you very much for tuning in for this one. What we are going to be doing is we are going to be showing the starting lineups and reserves for both of these sides so that we are well aware of who's going to be out on the field. Only a couple changes here for the Springboks in the early stages of this one. What we will do as well is we will push me over to the side just a little bit, but looking through that front row. And that is where most of the changes have come from. For the Springboks, Stephen Kitsoff is going to be at number one. Bongi Umbunambi at two. And then it will be Franz Maharba, who is going to be starting at three. Now, both Kitsoff and Maharba both came off the bench in the last week's match up against the British and Irish Lions. Then looking at the lock pairing, identical to last week. Eben Etzebeth, as always, a very physical player. And he will have to be in this game up against Maro Atoje. That's the battle that I'm looking forward to seeing once again. We did see last week that both of them were having their own wee moments in the game where they were dominant. So who is going to get the better of this one? We will have to wait and see. Also, Franco Mostert is going to be there in the number five jersey to be able to close out that lock pairing. Looking at the loose ball, it's just the one change for the Springboks here. Sia Khaleesi starting at six for this one. Then also, it will be Peter Stiftatoy at seven. Probably at a relatively quiet game overall, but he loves rushing up for that defensive line, trying to shut down the back line of the British and Irish Lions. And I think that's exactly what he's going to have to do in this game as well. We didn't really get to see too many backline movements for either side in the, the last match. The likes of Cheslin Colby and of a Pimpy out on the wing, they hardly touched the ball throughout the match. So it will be interesting to see whether or not that will change for this one. But it is, it's going to be Jasper Visa, who will be starting at eight. That is replacing Kwaha Smith, who has dropped down to the bench. And a lot of people are hoping that Visa will be able to have a very good game in that number eight jersey, you've got to be assertive. But off the back of the scrums, it's one of those ones. There were a lot of them in the last week's match. The first half, the Springboks were having the better at scrum time. The second half, it was the British and Irish Lions who were able to turn it around. We have also got Go the Lions, says Vias, in the chat. And 40kg heavy a pack for South Africa as well. So that could prove very good for uh, very good news for them, I should say, 
in this situation. They are so, uh, showing Stephen, uh, the Stephen Kitts off. Tell you what, I'm too excited for this match. My brain's still waking up at this stage. I'm awake. Uh, my alarm cl- uh, coming in clutch, as well says Tesla. That's the thing. I actually woke up to having a dream that I slept through my alarm, and I was so worried up until the point that I saw my phone and saw that it was still only 2.27. And we still have plenty of time before this game kicking off. Aurora in the chat from Adrian. And also, we have got South Africa in the chat from Katie. And also our Kieran emojis. Anyone who is wondering how to get those emojis in the chat, it is through channel memberships, which there is a link as the pin comment if you do want to support the channel and become a channel member. But looking through the back line now of the Springboks, it is going to be Fafta Clerk starting this one at half back. It was a very interesting, uh, it was interesting last week. He did get almost, you could say, taken off the ball a couple times in a couple situations, but overall he is a resilient fella and he likes to bounce back and he was able to score the try for the Springboks. Or actually, no, he did actually get yellow carded, sorry, my apologies, in the match between South Africa A and the British and Irish Lions. So you will have to be careful. We didn't actually see any yellow cards in the last week's match, which was slightly surprising. And uh, also, yeah, maybe there will be one in this match. They're just showing CJ Stanza, or Stanza, sorry, who is on commentary at the moment. We have got Andre Pollard at 10 for this matchup, who has got a very dynamic kicking game, and he will be open to be able to use that, possibly also firing the wide ball out to Jeslin Colby or Mapimpi out on the wings because they need to get some of this ball if the Springboks want a chance of a win in this one. Then Damian Didalende at 12, and Lucan Your Arm is going to be at 13. Now, that is a combo that I very much enjoy seeing because of the fact that both of them have the pace, but both of them have a very good kind of key moments in the game where they have to make a decision. They're pretty good at it with their decision-making, and because of it, <coughs> normally leads to a decent chance for the Springboks back line, including Mapimpi out on one wing, out on the left wing for this match, and then it is going to be Cheslin Colby out on the right. Now, Cheslin Colby had a very quiet game in that first match, but I think it is because of the fact that everyone just expects them, uh, expects him sorry, to be able to have such a high standard week after week, and in this one, he was a little bit quieter, didn't get as many opportunities as he would have liked. And then it is going to be Willie LaRue, who will be closing out the starting lineup for the Spring Wars. We have got Giovanni said, uh, do you show the match here? Unfortunately, t- due to the copyright, we are unable to show any match footage. So I do apologize for that in advance. We have got hello to everyone. Time for the Lions to seal the deal with the series. See Sebastian as well. And we need them score predictions. So I think it is only going to be split by around five points or so in this one as well. Adoja had uh, Ed's Beth in his pocket last week, says Thick Boy. But that's the thing with Ed's Beth. As soon as he can show a little bit of that physicality that we know from him, <coughs> my voice is not going to be handling this one by the sounds of it, but yeah, we know that he has got a lot of physicality. And if he can use that up against Mara Toje in that this match, it's going to be probably it's the best physicality versus Mara Toje being able to get into that breakdown and get the penalties like he normally would. We have also got there, Rassi creating a slideshow. As well, says Adrian, there is a lot of hype around this game because of the fact that of the two coaches just going at it. Of course, we saw Rassi Erasmus ended up with that video that he did release midweek about the refereeing decisions by Nick Fury. So it's going to be interesting to see how many people are just looking purely at the refereeing in this game. It's we going to break some ribs, says Tesla. And also we have got first try Henshaw, Lions by five as well, says Sick Boy. And also we have got first try Colby in the chat from Adrian as well. But anyone who hasn't already, be sure to vote in that poll to decide who you think is going to be scoring the first try of this match. We have got, uh, uh, sorry, I read that one we have got there. Uh, I am well just woke up to a notification for the stream. Life is good as well. Says Katie, what time is it there in the US? Do let me know. I mean, yeah, at this stage, we are sitting 3.39 a.m. here in New Zealand, still waking ourselves up for this match that is going to be taking place in around 20 minutes' time. But then looking at the British and Irish Lions lineup, they have got a couple changes as well, they have got Marco Vonapola. He is going to be starting at number one. Originally, for that first match, it was going to be Win Jones. But unfortunately, out with a shoulder injury. Didn't mean that it was Rory Sutherland who did take his place with Vonapola coming off the bench. This time, it is going to be Vonapola starting this one. Cowan Dickey starting at two. He was able to score the try in the last match. The only try for the British and Irish Lions off the rolling mall. Which is something we only saw four lineouts in last week's match. Which is like an incredibly low number. For both of these sides, I guess you could say, whereas we had a total of 16 penalties, 16 or sorry, uh, 12 against the Springboks, and it was a total of, it was four, no, sorry, it was eight. So there's even more, 24 penalties in this match, and it was only four lineouts, which just makes it even more 
interesting that we didn't get to see too many of them throughout this match. Definitely because of the fact that one of the rolling mall tries, or the only rolling mall try, was actually scored off that line out. Then Tyke Furlong going to be starting at three, who is a very dangerous ball runner and also very good in the scrums as well. We have got there, I agree, mate. It's best physicality against the Toje's athleticism is the most exciting battle on the field for me, says Thick Boy. And also we have got the Kirins and the Bumfas in the chat from Tessa. It's 9.39 a.m. in the high desert, says Katie. And also aggressive South African started, uh, start followed by a high stamina finish by the Lions close match. But the Lions win as well, says Wind Ups. Yeah, I think it is going to be Kind of similar to last week in regards to the fact that it will be the first half going to the Springboks, second half going to the British and Irish Lions. And it's just kind of that in-between phase of who is going to be able to be able to defend the other games or the other team's game better, I should say. Going to be an exciting battle out there on the field for the second test as well. Um, when are you uh, showing the game as well, says Ryan Tom. Unfortunately, due to licensing, we won't be able to show the game footage, sadly, because of the fact that it is going to be copyrighted. So we can only talk about the game and also try and inform you guys about everything that is happening when it comes to the game. But yeah, unfortunately, we aren't actually allowed to show any match footage. We have got Marco. Are uh, you still in bed with us <laughs> as well? And also, for some reason, I feel Willie uh, LaRue tonight. Uh, I sense a try from him for some reason. And that's one thing I feel like Willie LaRue in that last match, he didn't have as much of an impact in this one as he would have liked to. There are a lot of players out there for the Springboks who want to make a statement in the second game, if they can win this one, they have got the chance of being able to go on to that third game and win it. But if they are in that situation of being 2-0 down, the series will almost be over for the Springboks in this one. How's it, Hamish, as well? Says Carl Peterson. Welcome in to the live stream, mate. It is good to see you here once again for these live streams that are happening early hours of the morning here in New Zealand. But it is still very nice looking like it is at Cape Town Stadium. That was almost a sentence, and it is going to be... Kind of a 6 p.m. kickoff, I believe it is, if I'm not wrong. So it will be a very nice hour of the day to watch rugby first try Dan Bigger as well. The game will seal for uh, the unknown result firmly. I want Lions to seal the win as well, says Adrian. And uh, we don't want the Kiwi Lads channel to end up like full force rugby. I did see that he got taken down, which was a big shame because of the fact I know a lot of people do watch those videos. But I think he has a backup channel, but I'm not sure whether or not it is in full effect yet. But then looking back at the Springboks, or sorry, at the British and Irish Lions game that we are going to be witnessing. Looking at their lineup, Mara Toje going to be starting at four. Alan Jones, the captain, starting at five. He has got a huge amount of experience, and he will be wanting to use every inch of it here as well. Are you going to stream the rugby? Unfortunately, due to licensing, we can only commentate the game. Loose forwards for this one. It is going to be Courtney Laws once again. Tom Curry, he is one of the players that maybe is in the situation of a lot of people questioning some of his discipline in last week's match. We saw one where he actually entered the ruck from the Springbok side, which was an interesting one, but he is still a very talented player and has got the potential of it being able to score a try in this match, depending on how it goes. Then it's going to be Jack Conan, who is going to be starting at number eight. Off the back of the scrum, dangerous ball runner as well. Connor Murray getting the nod to start this one at number nine. It was Ali Price last week, had a decent game, but now Connor Murray, who did come off the bench in the last match, is going to get that chance to start. Dan Bigger, very experienced at number 10. Very good with his game as well. From that number 10 position, him versus Pollard is going to be an exciting battle to see once again happen in this game. Duan van Merva, someone who got shut down a little bit more than he would have liked in last week's match. It was on the left-wing side that he was marking up Chisel and Colby, but we didn't actually get to see that battle. And that was one that a lot of people were looking forward to. It was going to be the case of the speed and the power of Duan van Merva taking on the speed and the technical game of Chisel and Colby. We didn't get to see it last week, but this week, maybe we will get the chance. And on the out, or on the other wing, I should say, it is going to be Anthony Watson, who is going to be starting at 14 once again. Then looking at the midfield, they have got a change here for the British and Irish Lions. Robbie Henshaw going to be starting in that number 12 jersey once again, but then at number 13, rather than it being Elliot Daly, it is going to be Chris Harris, who is very good. In these pressure situation games, uh, where's the ref from? Anyone know? I think he might be from New Zealand. So hopefully uh, he does have a decent game there. We have got 4.45 p.m. here in sunny Wales. As well, says the boy, and best win for our Kiwis lad, uh, Kiwi ladies. Uh, K Kiwi ladies sevens as well. Yeah, they were able to get the gold, which is very awesome to see. The silver in the end went to France for anyone who didn't see the Tokyo Olympic women sevens. And then the bronze did end up going to Fiji. We have also got there. In the chat, it's not sunny as well, says from what I mean. And also, uh, it is uh, Gatland opened or openly told the squad who has had, or hasn't made an impact 
and to enjoy it while it lasts, says Adrian. Yeah, that's the thing. There's a lot of pressure on all of these guys who are out on the field. Definitely the Springboks, I feel, in this situation. Because if they lose this game, they cannot win the series. If it is the British and Irish Lions who lose this game, we go into the match next week, one and one, and then it could go easy uh, either way. Nice and chilly here in Cape Town, says Carl Peterson. What temperature are you looking at at the moment, mate? Do let me know and do or die for the Springboks. It is indeed. It is going to be tough for them. But if there is any side who can power through it, it is going to be the men in the dark gold, or sorry, the dark green, I should say. But at this stage, they have got Doge and Alan uh, Jones. We, you must start sweating when you're running towards those two. Yeah, it's one of those ones. In the breakdown, Mara Toje, he is very good. He's also good at getting under player skins. We saw it in the last week's match as well. But him versus Etzebeth, I feel like Etzebeth only put in one big hit in that last game, I believe. If I'm not wrong, or actually, it was the game before for South Africa A taking on the British and Irish Lions. It was that hit on Liam Williams. And that will be exactly once he wants he what, What's he wants he wants he? What was I saying? <laughs> exactly what he will want to do in the early stages of this match and force that physicality. Uh, ben O'Keefe from New Zealand will be officiating. Tell you what, I am going to get a lot of stick in the chat depending on how this game goes, I think. Even uh, depending on who wins this game because of the fact that the referee is from New Zealand at 17 degrees. But the house is cold as well, says Carl. And also we have got Go Bok in the chat from XX Shockwave. And at this stage, I think there are a lot of people hoping that this series becomes 1-1. But of course, there are the British and Irish Lions fans who want to see it closed out. They want to see this one as the final game that they do have to win of this competition. And who knows? People are mentioning a clean sweep. It is a little bit too early, though, I think, to be mentioning one of those at this stage. Go Bok as well, says Mornay in the chat. But looking back through one last man who I didn't mention in that one was Stuart Hogg. He is going to be in the number 15 jersey for the British and Irish Lions. Now, it's interesting Liam Williams off the bench in the last match, but I believe he has been left out of this one, and it is going to be instead Elliot Daly, who did start at 13. He is going to be making his way into that number 23 jersey, and I will actually bring up the reserves while we are at it. Looking at South Africa, Malcolm Marks at number 16, Trevor Kanye and Vincent Koch are going to be the other men making up the rest of the front row. It's going to be late in this game. We saw Nakanye up against Wynne Jones in that South Africa A versus British and Irish Lions game. He struggled, but Wynne Jones is not there for the British and Irish Lions. So Nakanye off the bench could become a little bit of a dangerous man when it comes to scrum time. He will be going up against Kyle Sinclair, though. So that will be a good battle to look forward to off the bench. Luke De Yaga, once again, going to be 19 alongside Ty Byrne, who has had a fantastic series so far for the British and Irish Lions from scoring his first try up against Japan's in preseason to being able to go on and consistently put on good performances off the bench and also in the starting lineup, that one is also going to be a great battle to watch between those two locks. Then it is going to be Marco van Staden, who they have decided to go with at number 20, to Lupe Falatau for British and Irish line. So they have got rid of Hamish Watson there. Perhaps, I'm not sure whether that's anything to do with the tackle that he made last week or whether it is just a case of they decided that maybe they'll go with to Lupe Falatau, more of an impact player off that bench. And definitely with that size factor coming off the back of a scrum late in a game, could be a very good for the British and Irish Lions. Then it is going to be number 21 for the Springboks. They have gone with Kwaha Smith. So they've actually gone with the spare forward here. They've gone with the 6-2 uh, split, which is something different to last week. So they have taken out Yankees, who was originally there in the number 22 jersey, although it is a different Yankees who will be 22 for this one. And that will be Herschel Yankees, the spare number nine for the Springboks. And then Damian Valimza will be closing out the starting lineup for the Springboks in that, that number 23 jersey. Ali Price was in the starting lineup last week. He is going to be off the bench this week in that, that number 21 jersey, trying to make an impact late in this match. Owen Farrell is going to be coming off the bench as well. 22 is the jersey he will be wearing for this one. He also had a very, a uh, couple very important late kicks in that last game up against the Springboks. So he will be wanting to make sure that he can continue that kicking game when he does make his way out onto the field and also just that experience factor and someone else who's very experienced, of course, Elliot Daly at number 23 is going to be closing out the starting lineup for the British and Irish Lions, was starting at 13 last week, but now he has added his name to that number 23 reserves, beat, uh, reserves bench, I should say. But we have also got their 17 degrees this, uh, Celsius in the Cape Town at the moment, which is going to be not too bad. Perfect rugby weather indeed. And at this stage, it is eight degrees here in New Zealand. That's actually pretty warm for this hour of the night, currently sitting at 3.50 a.m. We have got Jan Fenter in the chat and said hello as well. Welcome in. And I want to see this uh, Lions whitewash the box come on the Lions as well in the chat. And we have got, um, as or it always to be about uh, Jasper Wiesa 
said his name very weird there. Uh, Jasper Visa, sorry. And the difference he can make. Yeah, I know a lot of people are still saying they want to see Dwayne Vermeulen back. But unfortunately, due to injuries, has meant that he was out. They did end up going with Kwaha Smith in the last match. But this week, Visa is going to get that opportunity at eight. And it is probably, like they have mentioned, one of the biggest games of his life. He needs to make sure he plays well. And he needs to make sure he can help the Springboks have a good start in this one as well. Morning, Hamish. I hope you're well, mate. Um, go box by five, says Bertie V as well. And welcome in, Bertie. Thank you very much for tuning in once again. It is great to see all you guys here so early in New Zealand, but also at a decent hour there in South Africa. And also we've got a few uh, Northern Hemisphere viewers as well, which is pretty awesome as well. We have also got there. G'day, mate. Um, do you know Nathan uh, as well? I do not know Nathan Port Adelaide. I am sorry about that. Oh, yeah, it's got Visa could be the difference, says Carlo van Ransberg as well. But at this stage, like I mentioned, 17 degrees. Sounds like seven kilometers of wind as well and no chance of rain. It is a beautiful blue sky at Cape Town Stadium, and I am very excited for this one as well. We have got hi, bro, from Ryan. Welcome into the live stream, mate. Let's go South Africa, says Chris Seo as well. But at this stage, they are actually showing the fixtures that the British and Irish Lions have had leading into this game, and I actually have them available Looking at their first match, they were able to get the win over the Sigma Lions, 56 points to the 14, starting this tour in South Africa very well. Then the second game up against the South Sea Sharks, they were able to get that win comfortably as well, 54 points to the seven. The third game between the British and Irish Lions and the Bulls, the game we never got to see actually did get postponed, but then they did have another game up against the Sharks, and the Sharks in that game, 26 to 26 was the score after the first half, but then in the second half, there was a yellow card, to Jaden Hendricks, and then the score just kept on escalating for the British and Irish Lions. Looking at the next game that they played, it's a different result to those previous encounters. It was a win for South Africa. A. It was pretty much the full Springbok side, other than a few extra names in there as well, which means that that was one of the first ones that people thought there was a little bit of a chink in the British and Irish Lions defence, and possibly in that armour that people thought they were going to be able to clean sweep all of the easy game, or not all the easy games, but all of the games that people thought were going to be easy at the start of the tour. Then looking at how it continued, there was another big win for the British and Irish Lions. The Stormers left scoreless in terms of the tries that they did get in that game. They weren't able to get any, so that was looking very good for them. Then we see there the first test match, 22 points to the British and Irish Lions, 17 to South Africa. And at the stage, we are here. Almost got the right way. We are here. And there is only one of these left. So it means that this one has to go to South Africa or else the tour and the test series will be over for them to be able to get a chance of winning this one. So that is not what they will want. But yeah, last week it was 22 to South Africa, 22 to the British and Irish Lions. So in the end, it does mean that they are going one nil up in this one. And like I mentioned, the last time a side were able to get a win in a series after losing the first game, it was 1989. So it is a very long time indeed. We have what's got there. Um, so you've uh, ran, or you've never run a park, uh, or you've never ran a park run. No, I have not for I'm not too sure uh, who that is. And we have what's got there. Uh, we will make it even today. Says the skulk, and also we have got. Hopefully, it's a tough, close game. I think it is only going to be separated by a few points, like the last one. To be fair, even it's if they are trying 87 test caps. That man has got going to need every part of that experience up against the British and Irish Lions. Um, you know, Australia is coming to Bangladesh tomorrow. As well, says Ryan, I didn't actually know that. Is that for the cricket, I assume? Uh, if I'm not wrong, someone get Rassi Erasmus on the phone and make sure he's okay as well, says Katie Dixon. I'm wondering, did he actually end up getting uh, suspended or anything like that? Or is he going to be out there for the coaching and possibly on the waters, perhaps, for the spring box here? And we have also got, uh, uh, I can't predict a win for South Africa. Um, the Lions are going to be held for leader, as well, says Adrian. And also, we have got two tries. We're not, uh, or not, we're not counted in a couple of penalties. As well, says Tristan, yeah, we did see that full hour-long breakdown that Rassi Erasmus did of the refereeing of Nick Bering and also the TMO. So it's going to be an interesting one to see how many people are going to be looking at possibly the refereeing in this game. And it is going to be a Kiwi. So straight away, I am not responsible for any decisions made by a Kiwi referee in this competition. Please do not go after me in this situation. And hey, mate, I hope um, the Lions jump out of the blocks quickly tonight and steal the series as well, says a Sheep Shearer. And also, um, Holla Hops, uh, means as well, says Prince So Worldwide. And also, finally, I'm mad at so many channels streaming as well, says for uh, fantastic charisma. Yeah, there are a lot of channels doing it, although none of them are actually able to show the game, unfortunately, which is one of the big shames because of the fact I would absolutely love to be able to have you guys being able to see it. Uh, presenter who's your money on as well, says Kyle. I would say at this stage, 
I think it's going to go to the final game. So I think it's going to be one all. I think the Springboks are going to be winning this one. And I think it's actually going to be a very similar scoreline to last week. I'm going to say 22 to the Springboks this time. 17 to the Lions. Uh, and we have got uh, Kiwi Ref, you fixed the lead as well. Says uh, Adrian and also South African Power. Hope we can make it 1-1 as well, says Prezo. And also Kwasi has got the laughing emojis. But also we have got two late Hamish as well. And also majority of South Africans can't afford uh, to watch a match due to pay TV as well, says Prezo. That is a good point. I believe it is only on Super Sport in South Africa. And also I think there is another provider as well. Uh, DSTV, I think, is the other one. At the stage, we've been paid off as well. Says this a little for way to see him. What's up, bro? Says Emil, welcome into the live stream, mate. Thank you very much for tuning in for this one. And once again, I will show the stunning lineups for the Springboks and the British and Irish Lions as we move only around five minutes away from the kickoff. So looking at the South African lineup, two changes in the front row. Kits off and also Mahalaba, but going with Mbunambi in that, that number two jersey once again. And he didn't really get too much of a chance to get a rolling ball or anything going for the Springboks in that first match. Like I mentioned, only four lineouts throughout the 24 penalties conceded against either of these sides. So I feel like possibly taking on the three will be something both sides do throughout this match very often. Then it's going to be Etzebef and Franco Moster as the two lock pairing. Sia Khaleesi, the captain. Now, there was questions last week of whether or not he had the same effect on the game as Alan Wynn jones in that captain's jersey. We'll have to wait and see whether or not it could be the case in this one as well. Then it is also Peter Seftatoy, who is starting at seven, and Jasper Visa is going to be starting at eight. So very talented player to have off that number eight jersey, and he has to make sure that he has a very good game here up against a strong British and Irish Lions four-pack. or sorry, Fafta Clerk is going to be starting at nine for this one. Once again, Andre Pollard playing his 50th match in, or, uh, yeah, in the last test match. So he'll be hoping to once again have a decent performance. He missed a couple kicks last week, though, Pollard, which is something almost uncharacteristic. Uh, char oh, I can't think of that word. At currently 3, almost 4 a.m. here in New Zealand. Yeah, uncharacteristically like, uncharacteristic like of Andre Pollard there. Damien Delende and Lucanio Arm going to be making up the midfield combo once again. Jeslin Colby out on the one wing. Mapimpi out on the other. And Willie LaRue will be closing out the starting lineup. Then we look at the British and Irish Lions lineup. And once again, a change in that number one jersey. It is going to be Marco Vonopola, who will be. Uh, Kitsov is actually leading out the boys at this stage. So I'm wondering whether or not it is a special occasion for that man. I didn't actually see it on the, uh, yeah, on in terms of how many test caps he has played. Is that his 50th or is it his 100th? Do let me know about Yeah, at this stage, Vonopola starting at one. Then it is going to be Cowan Dickey. Oh, it is actually going to be his captaincy. I believe, if I'm not wrong. Uh, actually, I'm not actually sure what that is, but Stephen gets off here. He is getting the opportunity to lead the boys out. Uh, 50th appearance, there it is. And also, it is going to be Ty Furlong, who is starting at three. Cowan Tiki able to score a try in the last week's match. The only try for the British and Irish Lions. Uh, Irish Lions. I'm panicking at this stage. These guys are running out on the field very quick at the moment. Mara Toshe going to be starting at four. Alan Wynn jones once again going to be at five. And they are two very dangerous lot pairings. But like I mentioned, without the line-out game, in the, the kind of factor for either of these sides, Mara Toje is probably the most dangerous out of those two. Courtney Laws, Tom Curry, and Jack Conan going to be making up the midfield trio. and Or sorry, the loose forward trio for this one. They are showing Sia Khaleesi at the moment. He will be hoping to be able to get his side a win here. Conor Murray starting at nine over Ali Price. Dan Bigger starting at 10. The one funder mover out on one wing. Anthony Watson out on the other. Strong back line here for the British and Irish Lions. Once again, Robbie Henshaw starting at 12. Chris Harris at 13. And Stuart Hogg going to be closing out the starting lineup. Then looking at the reserves, you have got Malcolm Marks, Trevor Nakanye, Vincent Koch, Luther Jager, Marco van Staden, Kwaha Smith. They have gone with the extra forward on the bench for the Springboks. And then Herschel Yankees and also Damian Le uh, Valimza is going to be closing out the starting lineup. For the Springboks, then looking at the British and Irish Lions, Ken Owens, then it is going to be Rory Sutherland, Kyle Sinclair, Ty Byrne, Talupe Falatau getting his first impact and um, first um, uh, uh, appearance, sorry, in one of these test matches. Then also Ali Price starting at nine or starting at 21 rather than nine. I'm having a shocker. And then it is going to be Owen Farrell and then Elliot Daly closing out the starting lineup. For the British and Irish Lions, right? The chat is going extremely quick at the moment, but I do appreciate every single one of you being here. And we have also got in there Kiwi Ref as well in the uh, chat. Yes, it is going to be Ben O'Keefe. Uh, ben O'Keefe, sorry. Um, is this a match? This baby, and unfortunately, due to licensing, I'm unable to show any match footage or audio, but I will be doing my best to provide the commentary of this match for you guys and try and keep you informed as well. I need a bit of a um, 
I need to get a bit wired just to understand the speed talking as well, says Steve. And I feel like it's getting worse because of the fact that because normally I would stay up right through to the kickoff, but this time I decided to sleep. And I feel like that was a bad idea on my part because I am still kind of half asleep, but hopefully it will be all right throughout the match as well. I hope the referee don't take man of the match tonight as well. Yeah, that is a good point. Definitely because he is a New Zealand referee and I am from New Zealand. So I really don't want to <laughs> receive any stick for the refereeing. Of course, Nick Berry, we know him from the Southern Hemisphere as not being the greatest referee. So because of the fact that he did have a bad game in this situation as well, I guess now more people know about it. I guess you could say apparently South Africans doing a hucker as well, says Tesla. Although they haven't got to that stage yet. We have got Sevu in the chat as well. I said, hey, bro, welcome in to the live stream, mate. At this stage, we have got the South African national anthem. And then from there, it is going to be the British and Irish Lions who will be not singing the national anthem. But they did put down the line earlier on. You can see the passion out there on the faces of the players. They know how much of a must win it is for the Springboks. Like I mentioned, 1989, the last time a side lost a first test match and then were able to win a series. So it's a massive amount of time since that has happened. So they need to make sure that they can get this win or else it will also be the first time the Springboks have lost a series on home soil since 1980 or sorry, 1997. And that one we have, it's got, are you just commentating, says Dan's, I am indeed. Unfortunately, due to licensing, we aren't allowed to show any match footage or audio. But I will try my best to keep you guys informed, including the referees for this one. It is going to be Ben O'Keefe, who has taken charge. He's given Andre Pollard a handshake on halfway. It is going to be the Springboks kicking off this one for the second test match of the British and Irish Lions. And Springboks tour, who's the TMO? As well, says Mick Brown. Or, uh, yes, it is Mick Brown. I didn't actually have a look there. I will go back. It is going to be Marius Yonka once again. Oh, okay. So I don't know how many people will be happy about that one at this stage. I know there were quite a few people not too happy with the performance that he put in last week. But I will mention, if you are new to this channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, leave a like on this live stream if you are new. And if you are in a position to, be, uh, to do so, sorry, there is a link in the pinned comment to channel memberships. It gives you access to exclusive uh, emojis. In the chat, if you do want to use them, like some of our members have been doing earlier on with the Kieran emoji, which is this man who is slightly hidden, but that is going to be the kickoff now. Andre Pollard kicking off short in the second match. A little bit of a knock on, was it from up and be straight in? I know it is going to be Tom Curry just outside of the 22, and the position is going to be in the hands of the British and Irish Lions. Looks like it is going to be Connor Murray kicking this ball high. And one thing I have noticed with him from watching him in this tour, he is cool, calm, and collected under pressure when he needs to be. Going high, Anthony Watson trying to line it up. Not quite able to take it. And Mara Tojo, a bit of a knock on there. And now it's going to be Willie LaRouche shut down by Laws and Alan Wynne jones Getting driven back towards the halfway line. And it is going to be in the possession of the Springboks. Stephen Kitsoff in his 50th test match is going to be able to get his first carry. Mara Toje was trying to lurk around the side of that ruck, lining up 50 clue. And now it's going to be Willie LaRouche on the outside. Gives it to Khaleesi, the captain for the Springboks. But they have still got position here. And it's one thing. Who is going to be giving away the first penalty of this match? And tell you what, that was a huge hit on Edson. If they've got the advantage, and that's going to be the penalty against the British and Irish line. So that answers that question straight away. In that situation, we have us got Anita Bra uh, right now. As it well, says been uh, fantastic charisma. Any screen please says uh, kudos. Unfortunately, due to the copyright side of it, I don't think there will be any on YouTube who are actually showing the game. Unfortunately, Lions, let's uh, get it tonight. As it well, all it's, all right, Lions get to it, says Mick Brown. And Bok, we are counting on you. Says Shannon's life. Yeah, a lot of pressure. And this one's going to be kick for touch here, which is straight away showing the aggressive side of the Springboks. But it's a bit hard in that tackle by Furlong and Vodopola, driving him backwards, which is not very easy to do. But then Vodopola just not able to roll away. But 15 meters out now, the Springboks are going to have the first line out of this match. The last match, we only had four line outs. So for there to already be one in this match just shows that maybe we could be seeing around 10 in this one, but Bongi Umbonambi is going to be the man to throw this one for the Springboks. And straight away now, it's actually going to be a drinks break. Uh, already only a minute and a half into this match. I'm not sure what's happening there. I'm not sure whether it's tactical or whether it is the case of the players actually did need the drink. But yeah, already a drinks break. Only a minute and a half in. Seems a little bit strange. We have got come on in the name of rugby. Says Adrian, and also we have got penalty for not rolling away. Marco uh, Rassi, we'll talk about you on this video next week. Says fantastic charisma, and I wish there were more Welsh players. Says Gloria, although they do have a few coming off the bench. The likes of Tolupe Falatel, he's going to be an exciting one to watch come off that bench. Also, just trying to think through the other reserves that they have gone with. They've got Ken Owens is a good option for them. I can actually put them up while we have got a swing and play 
Also, the likes of, um, yeah, actually, that is the only two Welshmen that they have got on the bench. A couple Irish and a few more English for the British and Irish Lions. Looking at South Africa here for their bench as well. Going to be very decent. I think at this stage, we have got the stoppage. And we know Kiefer okay just saying, let's get on with it here, boys. We are ready to go. They're showing the man in the number five jersey, Franco Mostert. He might be the man that they aim at. And this line out for Bongi on Banami now is going to be putting this ball into the line out. Right. Nick Berry is going to be in charge of this near side for his assistant referee role here. He is saying possibly that they're closing the gap a little bit here. Bongi on Banami and Nick Berry telling them to take a couple steps back here in this situation. Where do the Springboks go? It looks like that they could be lining up here to be a few. They have they've gone to the front here, and now the rolling mall has started, but it is going backwards at this stage. But Bongi Umbanambi is going to be trying to help direct it in the direction of the try line. Alan Wynn Jones right in the middle, trying to slow it down. Mara Toje in the side as well. This is going to be a good rolling mall here for the Springboks, but it is going to be a tackle there from Connor Murray, not releasing though, and it is going to be now a scrum to the British, or sorry, to the Springboks here. And we have what's got there. Um, don't bring your gents to New Zealand as well. And also we have got 70 or 276 watching. That is pretty awesome indeed. Oh, and already there is a few words being exchanged between the two lots. It's a Beth and also Alan Wynn Jones. And it's a Beth not taking a backward step. He is getting right in the face of Alan Wynn Jones. Let him know all about it. This game is going to have a lot of fashion on the line. That is for sure. And it's a Beth really. Tell you what, there's still stuff going on out there. At the moment, between the two sides, and one thing about Cape Town Stadium, they just love ringing that bell anytime there is a little bit of push and shove as well. But 42 likes on this already. Can we get that to half time, perhaps? Or to, sorry, can we get that to 50 likes before getting to the first 10 minutes of this match? If you haven't already, be sure to leave a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you are new. It is hugely appreciated all the support you guys have been showing on these live streams. And yeah, hopefully, it is going to be a good match. And straight away, Ben O'Keefe is telling both of the captains we are not having any more of the push and shove in this one, Elwin Jones, and even it's of fight club as well. I think I know who will win that fight, though. So Elwin Jones will have to be very careful not to rack it's of up too much, unless that is a little bit of a tactic, maybe, to try and get it's of F to make a decision that he won't be wanting to uh, end up making. But now, Ben O'Keefe just telling them very strictly now, he's saying no more of that, or else players could be going off the field Ben O'Keefe now is looking like he is going to be well and truly enforcing the making sure that the discipline is on point from both teams in this one. Go Bok as well. See Shannon. And also, I really feel like uh, Box may not win this one. See fantastic charisma. They've started this match well, though, for the first couple of minutes. And now they've got an attacking scrum from only 10 metres out from the Springbok line, or sorry, from the British and Irish Lions line. So I think at this stage, they need to make sure that they score an early try in this one to be able to really give them that momentum. Because at the end of the day, the first try of the match in the last match was scored in the 45th minute by was Cal and Dickey in the end. And then there was one other try for the Springboks in that second half, but no one was able to score in that first half. So that is what the Springboks, they will be aiming to do from here, 10 metres out. And at this stage, the front row, 358 kgs for the Springboks. So they have got that 2 kg advantage in that regard. The locks, uh, the locks, sorry, are identical. And it's going to be now Fafta Clerk taking the quick tap. Oh, it's going to be look on your arm lined up in the tackle there by Chris Harris. But that is something that they are doing differently this week as well. The Springboks taking the quick tap rather than taking on the three-pointer. Although I believe it was just a free kick. It's going to be a white ball. Chiseling Colby taking that one very nicely. Getting his first carry off this match where he is dragged down by Laws. Now it's going to be going back across. Well, Mostert is going to be on the arm. Of, I believe it was uh, Jesper Visa who did get that carry, but now it's almost becoming a rolling ball, but Kitsoff is dragged down to the ground, still inside of the 22, five faces in here, Bongi Umbanambi taking contact, he is going to be tackled by Kelly Dickey, and it's going to be another penalty advantage up against the British and Irish Lions, Mara Toje, the man, giving away that one, Willie LaRue with great hands there, and now it's going to be on the outside, gives it to Chisel and Colby, going down the wing, he is stepping through, but he is going to be tackled by Dan Bigger, five metres short of the line, and it's going to be another penalty there. And it was the player leaving the feet. It was the Springboks player, that is. So now they are going back, and it is going to be the penalty to the Springboks straight out in front. So an easy three points. Are uh, they going to take it on? That's a big question for uh, Lions. Let's have first score as well, says Mick Brown. Do let me know your score predictions in the chat as well. Who you think is going to be taking on this second test match? Going into the third with a win, perhaps, the Springboks, or could it be going into 2-0? At this stage for the British and Irish Lions, we have what's got there. I wouldn't fight either, especially Alan Wins Jones as well. Says Riff want to be and the ref uh tell them what what uh what's what as well. Says Chrissy and DS uh TV Supersport is the same as well. Says YouTube user. I didn't actually know that. I thought they were two separate things. Uh so thank you very much for that bit of information. First, easy points as well, says Max. And also we have got in there 
uh, Colby or Caleb Clark. They're two very different players in that regard, both pacey and both have quite a bit of deceptive strength. I mean, Caleb Clark, it's pretty obvious that he would have a bit of strength, but yeah, Chislin Colby, he is actually quite a strong individual. Great tackling Deacon Eckers now, but it looked like Quaha Smith was about to make his way out onto the field due to the injury of Peter Steph the Toy, which would have been huge for the Springboks this early on, although one benefit of that is the fact that they do actually have the extra man on the bench in terms of the forwards. They have gone with the 6-2 split, South Africa winning 36-17 to as well, and we have got um, British and Irish Lions going to win, says Mick Brown, and looks like a yellow uh, going to be um, if uh, going to be used if Kiwi's with uh, ref. Well, no, not quite above the horizontal there, I don't think, but he did have an awkward fall in the tackle of Duan van der Merwe. And at the end, by it was uh, it was actually Peter Steph to toy, like I mentioned, who did get injured, but they have taken the shot on here, the uh, Springboks. And he's looking a little bit rocked there early on. Peter Steph to toy fell very hard on his back in the tackle with a six foot five Duan van der Merwe, who is ex South African as well. I guess you could say we have got their refs always favoring the box. Rassi's influence uh, working as well. Says uh, Smithy Toy, tell you what, maybe it was the mind goes after that first one. It has worked out, but that one has gone down the middle from Andre Pollard, and now it is going to be the lead for the Springboks. Four minutes into this match, and they are going to be leading this one 3 0 at this stage. Who will win? Says Tom. I think a part of me wants to see it become 1 1 just so that it's all on the line in the third one, but for that to happen, the Springboks need to make sure they continue using this pressure that they have built up early on. Two penalties already going against the British and Irish Lions. But hopefully my scoreboard does update very soon, but it is currently 3-0 to the Springboks. But the mover making the tackle there on the Springboks player just inside of the 22 now, 20 metres out from their own line. And it looks like Fuftaclerk, or Fuftaclerk, sorry, is going to be taking on this kicking opportunity. Uh, why doesn't uh, Pundamurva play for the box? I think it is to do with the Scottish, uh, Scottish international caps. I think I could be wrong in that regard, but I think that is why now Chris Harris got this ball on the halfway line, running straight at Damien Dialinde, and he has been able to drag him down. Now it's going to be going back. Murray gives it to Dan Bigger, little chip in behind. It's going to be chased by Curry, but taken beautifully by a Fuff to Clerk. And at this stage now, the Springboks have been able to get the position back. It's interesting that the scoreboard hasn't actually updated itself yet. So what I might do is I might actually put up a backup scoreboard so you guys know exactly who is winning this match. But at this stage, uh, Stephen Kitsoff taking the contact there. Right, we will go like this and we will go like this. Hopefully that is working well now. And well done as well, says Tom. And at this stage now, it has gone very high in the air from the kick of fifth o'clock, taken nicely by Dan Bigger. And that is going to be a big hit from Mbunambi straight back to his feet, almost able to contest, but not quite able to. And it was actually um, a Pimpy who made that tackle, but now it's going to be Wynn Jones running straight at It's a Beth. And he has been dragged down there. I will try and read the chat in a very short moment, but I do appreciate every single one of you being here. Anyone who is wondering why we are not showing the game, it is due to licensing that unfortunately we are not able to. But now Dan Bigger with the little kick. Cross kick once again from Bigger. Going to be sitting up nicely for Damien Delinde. And it is going to be going back now for the penalty. He was tackled in the air as the call. And it was against Mapimpi there. We have also got in there. Where can I watch it live? I believe your best sport, depending on what country you're in, is probably super sport in South Africa. And 50th Games says YouTube user as well. For Stephen Kitsoff, we have also got there. Also got to say you're up late if you're in either New Zealand or Australia. Yep, I am in New Zealand. And we are sitting at 4.15 a.m. Uh, New Zealand time. So it is a very early morning start. I did actually try and sleep a little bit beforehand. I only got a couple hours because of the fact that, yeah, it's just one of those ones. Who can sleep when there is a British and Irish Lions tour match coming up? It is a very exciting, and that was actually Mapimpi just making the tackle. Got the timing just a little bit wrong, which did lead to the penalty. Cowan Dickey now with the line-out throw here for the British and Irish Lions. Almost straight on the ball there was Eta Beth, but now it's going to be Mara Toje running straight at Andre Pollard, who has been able to drag him down now. 25 metres out here are the British and Irish Lions inside ball to Vonapola driving forward with the big forwards of the British and Irish Lions. Once again, Laws now getting a carry. It is going to be all the Englishmen hitting the ball up at the moment. For the Lions, going to be going back. And it's going to be a drop kick. No, it's not. It's going to be a high ball from Dan Bigger. It's going to be Duan van der Merwe trying to get under it. Has he got it? No, Willie LaRue takes it. And it is going to be a little knock on from Willie LaRue. And because of it now, it does mean that it is going to be a scrum 10 metres out for the British and Irish Lions. Both sides going with that kicking game once again. But I will say straight away, both of them going with a different style of kicking. We've seen a couple of chipping behinds from Dan Bigger compared to the just up and unders that we saw from the halfbacks in both of the matches or in both of the, uh, or sorry, in the game last week from both halfbacks, uh, Murdoch and uh, Control Sky as well. Says uh, Mick Brown and also watch it live on uh, Rody Rugby as well. Says Marco Vodopolovic and also we have got there, um, I think uh, uh, I think at one point last week we had 20 plus viewers on a stream as well. 
says Marco Vodopol will be that is a pretty crazy number indeed. Um, but yeah, even our one at 900 viewers was hectic enough, but I did appreciate every single one of you being here. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button and also leave a like on this one. But now the first scrum of this match, eight minutes in. Actually, it's the second one. First attacking scrum for the British and Irish Lions. And come on, scrum, uh, scrum down 10 metres out. Uh, number eight run, please, as well. And they have got the option off the back of that scrum for Jack Conan. And he is a very dangerous ball runner as well. Rugby is quite easy. Uh, playing a forward uh, is the easiest position as well. Just fantastic charisma. Although when you get into a scrum, I would not want to be a front rower because of the fact that if that scrum goes down, you guys just both go bang, straight down in the middle, landed on the neck. But they are showing Duan fun to move. He didn't have the most impact in the last week's match, but he will certainly be wanting to have a little bit more of one in this week. But it is going to be now Connor Murray feeding this ball in for the British and Irish Lions. 10 metres out, like I mentioned, going instead of going off the back with the number eight, it's going to be Robbie Enchel inside ball to fund the move a bit. He, he has been shut down by Khaleesi there. Cowan Dickey going around the side, was able to score last week. Hoping to do the same in this one. They've got the advantage once again. And it is going to be now another opportunity for them to just keep on putting phases together for the first time. They look like they are going to be reaching five. No, they're not. It is going to be the penalty advantage. And they are going back for the penalty now. Nine minutes in. This is an easy three-pointer, but Dan Bigger looks like, is he going to take on possibly going for a quick tap here or something? No, they are going to be taking on the three-point. They've decided that three points to equalize in this game is important. I'm not sure why they've given South Africa six points. I'm not sure what's going on with the scoreboard at the moment, but they are having a shocker. But at this stage, it is 3-0 to South Africa with a kick to come for the British and Irish Lions. Hit on hit contact there between Visa and also it was Cowan Dickey, which always is a little bit hard to watch when you do get to see that head-on-head. -head. Uh, yes, 4.15 a.m. here in New Zealand, freezing as usual as well. Yeah, it is pretty cold at the stage, although not too bad in terms of what it has been the other night. So I've got the fire going at the stage. We put a big enough log on it so that it would last from the time I went to sleep to the time that I was going to be waking up for this live stream, which was around 2.30. But at the stage now, that kick has gone over. Don't listen to the scoreboard. What we are actually going to be doing for now is we are going to be remover, uh, removing it Sorry, until it does sort itself out. So we are going to be saying at this stage it is 3-all between these two sides after around 10 minutes. It was got in there. Rassi exposed the pathetic uh, inconsistency of international refereeing with his analysis video last Tuesday. And that's the thing. That is something we've known about Nick Berry for a little while here in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, but now everyone on the world seems to know it as well. Kicks off there. It's going to get this ball just outside of the 22. The spring box were able to retain off kickoff. Damien Dialende thought about kicking that one. Almost ended up with the shepherding situation. Once again, going to almost end up with it as well. But it's going to be a little Kanye arm going short side here for the spring box. And they are going to be hoping to get themselves on the score sheet for the next time in this match. I see that it still says 6-0 as well on that other scoreboard that I was using, so I won't put that back up until they do work out who is scoring the points. But now it's going to be an answer to Yolinde on the outside. It's got Willie LaRue. One more draw and pass out to Chitlin and Colby down the wing. Going to be trying to step in. He is going to be tackled by Jack Conan and driven backwards in a, a physical tackle by the number eight. Going to be back to De Klerk. Once again, looking for the back line here. It's going to be in the hands of Franco Mostert. Going to be hitting it up at the line here. For the spring box, tackle backwards by Vodopolo and also Alan Wynn Jones fell awkwardly, but now it's going to be Dialendo once again. Going to be driven backwards. Physicality is the name of the game for the British and Irish Lions. Great tackle from Vodopolo. Now it's going to be kicks off once again, running straight at Henshaw, who has been able to make the tackle 11 and a half minutes into this first one, or into the first half, I should say. Now it's going to be Franz Mahraba getting his first carry off this match. And at the stage, still 25 metres out and 10 phases in. It's going to be now the toy taking the tackle. And it was Chris Harris who was able to make another crucial tackle for the British and Irish Lions. As soon as you give the Springboks a line break, more than likely they will be able to get themselves on the board. It's going to be now, look on your arm, little kick in behind, but it is going straight into the hands here. Of all, oh, damn, bigger hit. Almost a little bit high from a pimpy, but he was falling into it, which I believe would be what they are going off there. But there is no advantage here for the British and Irish Lions. Counter ruck and it's going to be a penalty though to the British and Irish Lions. Not releasing is the call there. And we have got things as well in the chat. And it is at the stage we have got, uh, why don't you just show uh, what we are watching or what you are watching so we can see it says we're open. Unfortunately, due to licensing, if we were to show any match footage or audio, the live stream would get taken down pretty much straight away. Uh, so yeah, that is why we are unfortunately not able to. In this situation, 93% of all ruck infringements or rucks are infr uh, infringements that aren't picked up on. As well as this, that that is a fun fact. In fact, although I guess it's not really that fun at the same time, I guess it is all just down to how the referees decide they want to ref this game. Of course, Ben O'Keefe is going to have to make sure that he has a very good game here or else he could get a video 
possibly made up out of as well. But I don't see Rassi Erasmus as the water boy here. So whether or not uh, you guys will probably know, did he end up getting himself in the situation of getting suspended or something like that? Or did he just stand down? Do let me know. Six foot as well. Says uh, fantastic. And also we have got there. Oh, he's being uh, pretty quiet. I thought uh, considering who he is. Oh, great hands from Ben O'Keefe there. Thrown to the back of the line out. Went straight over the top and Ben O'Keefe just slots it in the one arm and says have that one again, mate. But at the stage, he is just telling them for the British and Irish Lions to make sure that they, he knows exactly how many men they are going with the TMO um, that was brought in to stop South Africa uh, fouling off the ball. As well, says Smitty. And you have changed your name. And that is something that we were expecting about five weeks ago or maybe even longer, but now it has happened. And it is looking good indeed. We have us get uh, three, three bigger. As a well says Riff Wannabe. And also we have got refs are human, uh, not robots. It's normal for them to miss stuff as well, says Tesla. And yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. I feel like everyone is watching the refereeing in this game. So Ben O'Keefe, he will be wanting to smash it out of the park here. But now it is going to be the rolling more. They've got the advantage here, I believe it is for. It was a monster. It wasn't quite able to roll away in that, that situation. And now straight back to his feet. Was the toy giving away the penalty or going back for the penalty, sorry, to the British and Irish Lions here. Conor Murray looking like he wanted to take this one almost quickly. Runs it to the mark and it is going to be Dan Bigger now who will be able to kick this one into touch. Uh, hard like, um, hard like uh, Maddox Lions as well. Says Big Brown and also come online. Says Adrian. But do let me know in the, the chat your score predictions for this match. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to vote in that poll and decide how many tries you think are going to be scored in this match. Tom has said you're a pretty good commentator. Uh, talks, the to um, uh, talks the talks in terms of action and fast enough to get through a bit of the interesting stuff. Glad to tune in, um, but it's bedtime here in New Zealand as well, says Tom. Yeah, at this stage, currently sitting 4.21 a.m. here in New Zealand. It's a late night, that is for sure. But yeah, I do appreciate you being here. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We are going to be covering the third test match as well, including also the Rugby Championship coming up, the New Zealand Provincial Competition, some of the Curry Cup. We've got it all happening on the channel at the moment. It is now going to be Luke Cowan Dickey with this line out throw just outside of the 22 for the British and Irish Lions, taken nicely by Courtney Laws, contested by Etzebeth but wasn't quite able to get the hand to it. Now it's going to be bigger short ball to Conan, who has a run it up there, 30 metres out for the British and Irish Lions. Dan Bigger once again, little chip in behind, and it's going out into the hands of Maro Toje, lined up by Fusser Clerk, and he is getting driven into touch, and he has just been thrown by Maro Toje on the touchline as well. A little bit of a battle, maybe. Some hard feelings between those two men. Now it is going to be going back into the hands of Courtney Laws once again, tackled by Kitsoff. In his 50th game, he will be open to have that one as a win. Unlike Andre Pollard, who had the 50th last week, advantage offside up against the Springboks once again. Now it's going to be all oh, Jeslin Colby got dropped there, and he has stayed down Jeslin Colby. And I believe he got an elbow to the head of Tom Curry, possibly. Or sorry, he got an elbow to the head from Tom Curry. Um, sort bigger. Um, you uh, you know you know uh, you know you can as well. Says Mac Brown, and also brilliant commentary. Says Drift Wannabe. Thank you very much, man. It, it's hugely appreciated. Right. They have actually fixed this, uh, fixed their scoreboard, so I can actually get rid of my one now. And we are going back to the fact that it is currently going to be 16 minutes, and Chisel and Colby is not looking flashy. I will read the ten in a very short moment, but Tom Curry driving forward and ends up. I thought it was the elbow, but it might have just been the forearm. No head on head in that one, and Chisel and Colby did stay down. This could be huge here for the British and Irish Lions to have Chisel and Colby not on the field up against them in the later stages. Um, and we have got brilliant commentary uh, while you're looking at two monitors as well as this regime. So pretty much my setup as it goes is that I have got the game on this monitor and I've got the chat over here. So that is why I'm kind of looking all around like I'm confused all the time, which I am, of course. I'm always confused, definitely at 4.30 a.m. here in New Zealand. But it's one of those ones as well. I found that having it both on the same kind of screen just didn't quite work. So I actually had to invest in a second monitor so far, 39 tackles made by the British and Irish Lions. They haven't missed a single tackle, just the one missed tackle for the Springboks and 18 tackles made as well. Um, get out of here, as well, says Mick. And also, we have all Scott Brilliant comments and commentary. Give me lads, awesome. Says Adrian, thank you very much, mate. Hugely appreciate you guys all being here. I also see we have got Jeffrey in the chat and Tesla are uh, missing three or four calls. is uh, acceptable, but 10 plus, no, no. The, the chat from MJ and uh, Reddish take this tonight. But this one now is going to be a kicking opportunity for Dan Bigger. It's going to be shot called by the British and Irish Lions here. And Dan Bigger wanted to make sure that he can convert this one. Currently four penalties against the Springboks, two against the British and Irish Lions. And the first two penalties of this match actually went to the uh, Springboks. So it has completely shifted once again. We have also got now 16 and a half minutes gone. And that one has gone over from Dan Bigger. So the score is going to be 16 points to the three early on in this match. Still no tries yet though. As well, we have got brilliant comments. Oh, I read that one. We have got Tom, Car uh, Tom Curry's got an absolute melon. Uh, on them too. Uh, head on heads, absolutely suck. Yeah, they do indeed. But Chisel and Cobby still out there. So 
So that is kind of surprising the way he stayed down. He looked a little bit ginger on the feet. And it is not what he would have been one on one, but now it is going to be inside of the 22, kicked downfield by Connor Murray. Not quite finding the touchline, but I don't believe he was going to be able to. Now it's going to be Willie LaRue. He has got the man on his side, decides to run straight up for Napolo once again, makes a physical tackle on the spring box. Franz Malhova now getting the carry on the halfway line to Kluk, fires it back in Andre Pollard here, slipping over with that kick, but it has gone high. And it looks like Mapimpi trying to line it up, taken beautifully by Stuart Hogg, tackled low by Khaleesi, though. About 40 metres out from the line, or 30 metres out, sorry, counter ruck here from the Springboks, but it is going to be very nicely done. No, it's not, and it is going to be the penalty to the Springboks here, and it looks like Conor Murray not letting that ball go. He has got Lukanyu arm on top of him in that situation, and there is a steer down between Stuart Hogg and Lukanyu arm there. Lots of arm loans uh, from last week's lo losers as well. Back and also, we have got, I went um, to this uh, other streaming channel, uh, and uh, it was so silent. I thought the video was on pause. It was just excellent as well. It's uh, fantastic. Thank you very much, mate. Do appreciate you guys all being here for these live streams. Definitely because of the fact we are at a random hour here in New Zealand. So it is just absolutely insane that we have been able to bring so many of you guys together for this one. Uh, careful of your commentary, uh, lad, because Russia is going to grill you as well as the game or after the game. Bollocks him. I'll enjoy your commentary as well, says Brian. Thank you very much, mate. Usually appreciate a 42.8 minutes out and the Springboks have decided to take on another kick. So at this stage, seems like it's going to be going similar in terms of that first half, not having any tries, perhaps. we have to wait and see. We have also got there in the chat, Amish. Um, it's going to be a famous sport, uh, sports commentator someday. Soon, uh, don't forget us as well when you're a Rockstar King as well. And that one is going to be missed by Andre Pollard. And that is something we don't normally see Andre Pollard missing kicks. Yet we have seen quite a few in these test matches ones. And I don't think the man feels pressure. He is normally cool, calm and collected under pressure. But... In this one, he has missed this kick as well. 42.8 metres out, though. Relatively tough for him. But I would have possibly expected a man of his calibre to be able to get that one. So a little bit of a reprieve for the British and Irish Lions here. To still have a 6-3 lead at this stage. And we have also got the emojis in the chat from it is Katie. But anyone who does want access to those Kieran emojis and all of those fun ones, also access to exclusive live streams we will be doing on the channel in the future. Be sure to become a channel member. The link is the pin comment, and it is hugely appreciated. It is one of those ones that if you guys do want to show a little bit of extra support towards the channel, please do be sure to sign up. And now Stuart Hogg on the halfway line going to be taking this ball and going into to uh, contact there. Visa just getting a little bit annoyed with Chris Harris. There is a lot of aggression out there on the field at the moment, but at this stage, the British and Irish line is just going to continue to hit this ball up, and now it is going to be rolled back for Connor Murray to be able to put this one high just inside of their own half, 55 out from the Springboks line. It's going to be an awkward taking one. Oh, it's almost taken by Duan Van A little knock on on the ground. No, he was actually able to keep that one going backwards there. Duan Van So now it's going to be Chris Harris, who has got this ball passes it across to Cowan Dickey, who is going to be tackled low in the tackle by Umbanambi. Victor Clerk going a little bit high there, but that was because of the low tackle from it was uh, the man in the number two jersey, Umbanambi, now still only 40 metres out. Now Conor Murray fires it back, gives it to Dan Bigger on the halfway line who once again goes with the high kick. This is going to be perfectly weighted here. Almost taken by Robbie Henshaw. Goes straight into the hands there of Andre Pollard. And now straight in the breakdown, two of the British and Irish Lions players has actually become a maul. So now it is just going to be the case of the Springboks need to get this ball out, but it doesn't look like they're going to be able to. Actually, it is going to go the way of... It's just a tackle, they have said. So because of it, both jackals made the tackle, and now it has become... A Springbok scrum in that situation. Uh, such a uh, shock, a uh, negative opinion again as well in the chat. I assume that is someone uh, that I did miss in that situation that we have got there. I went on, uh, he was drinking cover as well in the chat. Says Michael Vodafone there. Uh, something's telling me that this game's going to be decided with a drop goal. Just throwing it out there. Certainly could be in this one. We will have to wait to see Franco Mostert. 15 tackles made in the last match. The most tackles made uh, with 15. But yeah, I think a drop kick, we are going to see an attempt in this one. I don't know whether it will decide the game, but I think there is certainly going to be an attempted one. Maybe from Owen Farrell late on the match, perhaps. Uh, but we will have to wait and see. British and Irish Lions beating the block by uh, five points a block team with almost no rugby played for 20 months. And you're proud uh, with a, a five-point win. Uh, you should be worried about the Lions. says hanging around. And also we have got hey days. Uh, uh, hey, guys. Yeah, I'm really stressed for this game. Yeah, it's one of those win or... Uh, it's kind of a do or die situation, sorry, for these Springboks here. If they lose this game, they have lost the series. The first time that they have lost the series since 1997. But if the Springboks win this one, if they win the third, it will be the first time that a side have been one match down and to win the series since 1989, ages before I was born in that situation. But the Springboks now are going to have the scrum feed just outside 
of their own 22. Um, before anyone says anything, please don't go on about our box lack of rugby. As, profes- uh, as professionals, are you expected to play well every game uh, or you're expected to play well every game, says Toby Mills. And also we have got there South Africa, other world champions at home. So, jeez. Uh, oh, so I feel like the chat at this stage, there's going to be two two sides of the argument, I feel, throughout all of the slicing. So hopefully everyone will be able to be able to get along relatively well. But also, if you haven't already, be sure to leave a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you are new. We are going to be back with next week's match. That could be the decider, depending on what it is going to be. But now, it's going to be a big push there, and it's going to be an advantage for the Springboks. At scrum time, Fafta Kluk, little kick him behind there, looking for it. It's going to be going into touch there. But it is going right back for the penalty on the 22 for the front rows collapsing, I believe, or it might have actually been angling in on this far side, which would have been Marco Vonapola, who they are penalising there. Uh, you didn't answer who your favourite player was, as well as Smithy. I feel like I missed that one a little bit earlier on, but in this match, it's a hard one. Favourite player in this match. I will have a look down at the lineups while we are waiting for this kick to be taken place from Andre Pollard. I mean, Chisel and Gobi, of course, is always up there on everyone's list because of the fact that because of his size, a lot of people said that he wasn't going to be able to go too far, but he is an absolute star out on that wing, and he's got pace to burn as well. I quite like watching the cool calm head of look on your arm in the midfield as well. Is actually someone who I've been watching quite a bit in the South African uh, South African Rainbow Cup, and I quite like watching him play. So I'd say he's up there. Also for the British and Irish Lions, or oh, British and Irish Lions, I would go with maybe, I mean, Stuart Hogg's very class in that number 15 jersey. That's going to be taken there by Franco Mosto. 22 minutes into this game as well. For whoever was asking that one, but now it's going to be Andre Pollard. Backline movement, missing the pass though. And now it's going to be Cheslin Cobby. He's almost just been kicked by Duan van der Merwe there, which is an interesting one. Willie LaRue, just a little chip of mind. It's only got a couple meters. And now it is going to be going back for the penalty to the Springboks once again. And at the stage, and Pollard, uh, Pollard misses, not like him. Yeah, something that we don't expect. Chisel and Colby down again in this situation. This time, he looks like he's gripping at the possibly knee or the lower leg, which is not a good sign. He has been through the walls in this match already. And we have a Scott that you sound like uh, you've had a few, a few Red Bulls, says Joe Bro. I feel like I should have. I actually went to sleep before this live stream uh, and then got back up at around 2.30. And I haven't had anything to uh, drink. Or sorry, I haven't. Well, I guess I haven't had anything to drink. I've only had water, but I also... Haven't had anything to eat, so I feel like that's going to cost me later on in the slice stream when I end up just smacking my head on the desk when I do fall asleep. They are actually going to be checking this to see whether or not there was foul play on Chisel and Colby here. We have us got, oh, where can I watch the game on YouTube, says Brian. Unfortunately, there are no available live streams on YouTube that will be showing the game without them getting taken down within like about 20 seconds. Unfortunately, I will just quickly watch this one, but for watching it for free, he was actually kicked there in that situation. It was Duan van der Merwe who did extend the leg so it's nowhere near the ball, and this is going to be a yellow card to Duan van der Merwe. And that is a big moment in this game. The first yellow card that we have seen in these test series. Last week, people were saying maybe Hamish Watson would have been getting one for that tip above the horizontal. But this time, Duhan van der Merwe is going to end up getting yellow carded for that one. We have also got Don't Like Cheslin's new uh, scrum fit as well, says it, Damon. And also we have got uh, Springboks dropping like flies, says Smilly Toilet. Oh, wait a minute, Smithy Toilet, but we have us got in there chat. We had Smithy. Oh, no, we got Smithy and also Smithy Toilet. So, actually, we have still got Smithy Toilet as well. And we have got Naughty Doolan in the chat from Sebastian. But he is going to be going off the field now. And that is going to give the Springboks the one-man advantage for the next 10 minutes. And that will give about eight minutes left, or seven minutes left, sorry, before we get to halftime after that yellow card is up. We have us got in there as well. I think Yankees uh, needs to replace Fuff, uh, replace Fuff as well, says Bertie V. And Herschel Yankees. I remember the game that he played. I can't remember who it was against. It was either up against the All Blacks or maybe it was in... Uh, who was it up against that he scored that last-minute winning uh, match try? I'm sure you South African guys in the chat will be able to let me know. Um, there will be fa- uh, there will be foul play. Uh, they are trying to get rid of the box most dangerous weapon as well. Says hang around. And also, I watched someone streaming this game earlier and they last 15 minutes by putting a subscribe button um, over the Sky Sports logo. As well, says Toby Mills. I mean, that is pretty strategic, although I feel like it's one of those ones, in the end, I think they would have been taken down, were they? Which is one thing that we're not really willing to risk because of the fact that we have been doing so many of these live streams for the commentary side of it, and you guys have been absolutely loving them. But at this stage, Peter Stifter Toy is actually off the field. I didn't actually mention that at the time, but it means that, I believe, is it Quaha Smith who has decided to make his way out onto the field? Or maybe they have gone with Van Staden. Might have been the option there. Um, I didn't actually see him go off, though. I think I was too busy watching as well, uh, the chat possibly, and so annoying foul play, not needed to win as well, says Smitty, and also we have got there, um, now we will see uh, why he did, uh, well, now we see why he did an hour-long video, says Smitty, and also we have got, um, this will be a disastrous for the Lions, I think a try will come 
as the box are a man up. But yeah, anyone who does think they know how many tries we are going to have in this match, be sure to vote in that poll in the chat. It is the uh, poll. <laughs> I guess I just said it was a poll, but it is a poll that you can do through YouTube that you pretty much just click a button and it will draw and decide. I believe the winning one at the start of this match was actually three or four. So we will have to wait and see whether or not that will be the case. Not um, do our smartest move. Yeah, I think it was just a reflex. I've seen that ball out there, not realizing that Chisel and Colby was going to be bouncing on it. And it just ended up with a very unfortunate situation for the British and Irish Lions. They didn't need to be a man down in the situation, but now does open up the door for the Springboks to be able to put on a good move here. 23 minutes and 22 meters out from the line of the British and Irish Lions. And it's going to be a line out throw. That's the double blow of the whistle. So it is Quaha Smith who made his way out onto the field, replacing Peter Steftatoy as well. Thanks for the commentary, man. Breakfast listening in San Francisco. Welcome into the live stream, John. Thank you very much for tuning in, mate. It is usually appreciated. You guys all being here here. Um, and we, um, yeah, all being here for this live stream. It is currently 4.35 a.m. here in New Zealand, but did not want to miss this game. Knew it was going to be a good one, and there is a lot on the line in this one. Could be the win for the British and Irish Lions to win the tour, or it could be a win for the Springboks to make it 1-1, but that's going to be stolen in the line out by the British and Irish Lions, and Cowan Dickey has got that one in hand now, so that is very nicely done by the Lions to be able to seal that one in that line out, and it was in a very dangerous attacking position for the Springboks as well. And now by the looks of it, it is going to once again either be Conor Murray kicking this box kick, or he might consider rolling it backwards. Got to be kicking it himself, looking for the touch line as well. Oh, it hasn't found touch, and now it's going to be Cheslin Colby taking it inside of the half. Of the box once again, high ball from Andre Pollard being chased there by Colby trying to lurk around. Oh, he's taking the player out of the air. He's landed on his head. That's going to be a red card to Chisel and Colby. Oh, and Chisel and Colby now. It's a retaliation from Chisel and Colby and Tom Curry. It's all kicking off at Cape Town Stadium here. Yeah, and it's going to be Stuart Hoggy is fired up with Willie LaRue. There's almost going to be punches thrown here between these two guys at this stage. It is all breaking loose at this stage. I think that's going to be a red card to Chisel and Colby, though. At this stage, it's going to be at least it's a bit once again back with Mara Toja. He loves the fights with the locks at this stage. And it's going to be interesting. That's not what they would have been wanting. We've got one man out on that wing side off the field already. This is going to be another. It's at least a yellow card for Chisel and Colby here. Oh, my God, that was insane. I hate the way that Conor Murray fell. It was just one of the most awkward ways that you can fall because of the fact he didn't land straight on his head. He landed in an awkward, almost slightly scorpion, kind of crushing his neck which is not what you want to see. Uh, hi from Sri Lanka as well. And thanks for Sri Lanka. Says it, man. Welcome into the live stream, mate. And at this stage now, big moment here. Lions not going to be three as well. And also we have got, yes, property smash now. Can't beat a little uh, bit of handbags as well. Says Thick Boy and 555 says Chris CO. Boomfa in the chat says Tesla as well. Was Boomfa indeed. This one's going upstairs. Uh oh, fell as well. Says Smitty. Yellow or red in the chat? Do let me know for you guys who are watching this game at the moment. What would you give it as? Uh, we got the game people. Says Riff Wannabe. And also we have got Love Fight says fantastic and Bumfa in the chat. We have got them from the members. Anyone who does want access to that Bumfa emoji, be sure to become a channel member. It is the pin comment for this live stream. And it gives you access to those emojis as well as a, a few extra things for the channel, including exclusive live streams and also a badge. Um, but if there's something you want to do, it is five New Zealand dollars a month. But at the stage now, Chisel and Kobe, he's got a bleeding nose. He's already had a head knock in this game. He's already had his leg kicked also um, in the situation now. It might be the last moment of the game for him. Cheslin will get a red card. He's a bock. Um, if it was a lion, uh, it would have been, or he would have gotten away with it. Says Hanger Rat. He had eyes for the ball, but he didn't jump. It was in that situation of, unfortunately, he never saw. Okay, so he never actually looked to see Connor Murray jumping. But as a player, if you don't contest for that ball, you are in that situation of you're pretty much responsible for that man of the year. Uh, so because of it, it could be a yellow card. Thanks, buddy. Um, I'm out of the country, and this is invaluable. Great commentary, says Andy House. Thank you very much for tuning in, mate. Do appreciate you being here. Connor Murray falling awkwardly, kind of on his face in a weird manner. And because of it now, Cheslin Colby, no jumping attempt. He has taken the player out in the face of Connor Murray. It's going to be one of those 50-50 ones of whether or not it is going to be a red or a yellow with the way that he's falling. He has had contact with the ground with his head. But it is also the factor of one of the angles makes it look a lot worse. I think this is going to be a red for Cheslin Colby here. Uh, well, if Cheslin gets a red, um, then there is no need to watch any further. This hanging around. I mean, you could just hang out with us in the chat if you do want to. But yeah, at this stage, it's going to be a big moment in the bin. Merva as well says a drift wannabe. And also we have got, um, did you see Conor Murray's lipstick uh, dropped in his pocket, says MJ. And we have got now, yikes, says Katie Dixon. 
what is this call going to be? That's a question. I think they just said it, but I wasn't actually listening at that stage. I was talking flat out because of the moment. This is a huge moment in this game between these two sides. Jezel and Colby here, yellow or red? That is a big question. Uh, we have also got their uh, ridic uh, ridiculous of the video effects. Uh, if the video affects us, says Smitty as well. But yeah, Tom Curry there, also having a bit of push and shove there. With It was Jezel and Colby, and then it was actually... In the end, uh, Willie LaRue and Stuart Hogg kind of neck and neck there. And Stuart Hogg just walking him down in that situation. I think he was trying to hold back Willie LaRue there. But it was the after that was causing a few very many problems. It's a Maro Dojo. I said that that was going to be the battle, not because they were going to be putting on the boxing gloves and going at it in this game. But it seems like that could be what's happening later on in this match. Depending on how it goes, TMO, let's see, says Mick Brown as well. And we have got Evan versus entire red full back as well. Says Marco Bonapola Bear. And the law says red says Miller. Yeah, he did land on the head, which does mean if it is going to be refereed the way that we think it will be, Ben O'Keefe has no choice but to give Cheslin Colby a red card here. And I do see actually Alan Wynne Jones staying back there. Maybe he is either being told to stay back or maybe it is that situation of what is actually Tom Curry doing in this situation? He kind of ends up just standing over Cheslin Colby, grabs him by the neck as well and slightly pushes him backwards. So I feel like it's one of those ones that. They are just checking whether or not he did get maybe hit in the throat, I think they are saying. That Jezlin Colby may have hit Tom Curry in the throat, but Dan Bigger actually stayed down there. And I'm not sure what happened to him in that situation. Right, so we do see there Tom Curry just standing over Jezlin Colby. Then from there, he does actually push him in the throat. So that's almost going to be a rare card for that offense as well. And then it was actually Dan Bigger getting hit late by Umbanambi. And he did actually take a bit of a uh, a bit of a hit there on the spine. Should be yellow as well, says the snooze. Right, who is going to be coming over? It is going to be Marius Yonka with a big decision here. Ben O'Keefe, 14 coming in. Takes the player dangerously. Shoulders aren't above the hips. Falls on his back. He falls on his back. Falls on his back. He landed on his face, mate. But okay, I guess it is going to be a yellow card to Jalen Kowie. And now it's going to be 14 versus 14. And we've also got unfair rest time for the Lions as well. Says MJ Young. I'm not sure how he fell on his back. Anyone who watched that replay would 100% say, I'm not, I don't know what I would have given it as. It's either a yellow or a red, but I'm surprised that they said that he fell on his back in that situation. Off, 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 says Thick Boy. And also, Ben O'Keefe at this stage is saying he would be in this situation. He's not afraid to give out more cards if these guys end up uh, getting a bit angry. We've also got the Karen's in the chat from Katie. And also, I'd say red, in my opinion, um, but I'm not a ref as well, says Toby Mills. And also, we have got Dan Bigger deserves an Oscar for that as well. Yeah, he got it in the back by Umbanambi. And at this stage, I think it's a red says hanging around, but it is only going to be a yellow. Yellow is a relief. I agree there because of the fact, saying that he fell on his back when he kind of fell on his face. Um, yeah, it was an awkward fall, but it is going to be a yellow. And it means that Cheslin Colby off the field as well. No one is out on that left wing or right, or sorry, out on that wing side because Duan Fundamuva off the field. Also, Cheslin Colby off the field. Um, now, is that not a spare tackle last week? Um, or how is it not a spare tackle last week? As well as says here at. And uh, that's one for the highlights as well. Um, he was looking at the ball. I think that it's also the uh, saving grace for him, as well as the fact that it was, that he was, uh, he didn't go, oh, they said it, but I, didn't, I wasn't really listening, but it was something to do with the height that he did decide to tackle from. Lucky his face not squashed as well, says uh, Adrian. And also there's going to be a massive fight in the second half. Seems like there could be, maybe even in the first, but now it is going to be a continuing play. See how Khaleesi makes the tackle on the British and Irish Lions player. And they have got possession 40 metres out from the Springboks line now. Looks like Connor Murray now. Once again, it's going to be going short side. Gives it into the hands of Alan Wynne Jones. His first carry of the match so far. 25 minutes in to the second match. Or, yes, the second match, the second test between these two sides. Connor Murray going to be kicking this one high. Chased hard here by, I believe it is, Dan Bigger. Trying to line it up. Not quite able to take it. Beautifully taken by Andre Pollard. And that's going to enforce the Mark Murray Erasmus uh, words of um, the desired effect as well. Says Thick Boy. And also we have got, um, he fell back in his chair. Um, or he fell, um, he fell on his back, Hamish. Leave it as this is well. This is fantastic with a big smile emoji in the chat as well. And at the stage, we have also got in the chat. Uh, looking forward to Lions video complaining next week. Says there. Um, yeah, imagine that. Imagine the mind games if Warren Gatlin releases a video trying to just the debacle everything that happens for the refereeing in this game. But I don't think he would in this situation. But yeah, in the end, Andre Pollard able to take that one inside of the 22. Much needed as well. Come on, uh, let's go, Lions. Says Mac Brown in the chat. And also, we have got. I went. Oh, uh, I went them. Oh, I want them to kill each other. Says fantastic. I'm not sure we will go that far, but maybe we just get to see a physical game. I don't think there'll be any real punches thrown in this game. We saw one in the Cook Islands versus Tonga game, and no one even cared 
it was like the player just punched the guy in the face and it was because it was in back play that everyone was like, yeah, nah, she's all right. We'll just go on with it. But now it's going to be Cowan Dickey going to the back of the line here. Alan Wynn jones taking it nicely. Vona Pola now making some meters, but he is going to be tackled in the end by Umbarambi and Colisi. Going back now into the hands of Laws, driving hard at the line. He's going to be dragged down by the tie air prop. Franz Malharba, I believe there was a player doing roly polies in there. It was Kwaka Smith in the end. Now going once again to the right hand side, it's going to be Dialinde with a good tackle on Jack Conan. But the British and Irish Lions, they are feeling a little bit better, but that one's going to be going backwards with a almost knock on from Tom Curry, but it did end up traveling backwards. That's going to be now being told to leave. That one was Franco Mustard going to the right hand side. Anthony Watson now getting a carry someone who didn't have much of an impact in that first game, but now he is hoping that he will be able to have a few more runs in this one. Definitely with 14 men out on the field. He's got the 14 on his back, and he is one who is very dangerous when he gets a bit of space. Now it's going to be Dan Bigger. Tackled very nicely low by Franco Mostert. Not going to be able to roll away there, but it is going to continue going to the short side. Going out to Stuart Hogg, who is now out on the wing. Little chip of mine, beautifully done by Stuart Hogg. It's going to bounce into Dutch, though. And now he has got Itzabev's hands on his back. But they are just going to end up in that situation of moving on. I felt like Itzabev, all he had to do there, if he did do a little push, then it was going to be kicking off between those two sides. We have what's got there. The coach uh, puts out an hour-long video um, to manipula um, manipulate the red, and it worked as well. Since it's Smitty, and also we have got lines, lines, lines from Mick Brown, and also um, Test Series and Never Disneyland in South Africa, and the scoreboard um, attended uh, fell asleep as well. Yeah, at this stage, it seems to be one of those ones. Earlier on in the match, it was 6-0 to the Springboks, which has never been the case in this matchup. So any time that that does end up falling behind, I will just switch it so that you guys don't get to see the time, but you will be able to see the scoreboard of the match, but now it is going to be Mbanambi going short. It's going to be stolen in the line out once again by the British and Irish Lions the second time in this match. Now Maro, or sorry, yes, it is going to be Marco Vonopola driving forward with another carry. He's been dangerous throughout the early stages of this match as well. Jack Conan, beautiful back ball now into the hands of Chris Harris. Going to be strong. He's got, it was Anthony Watson on the outside. Fifth of Clerks just tackled himself and done a full 360 in the air. That was impressive. But now it is going to be Wynn Jones having that ball ripped away by Kwaha Smith. A little bit of a knock on Yes, it is. And now it is going to be the scrum feed for the Springboks now just outside of their 22. Uh, the Tennyson is thick as well, <laughs> says Katie Dixon. Also, we have got Colby is fired, uh, too fired up. Take a time out and call off my guy as well, says Carl Peterson. He has still got another four minutes or actually five and a half minutes to be able to call down in this situation. And Duan Fundamurva is the same. That two steals as well, says Riff Wannabe. They can add up. We only saw four lineouts in the last match between these two sides. If they end up in that situation of once again having not too many lineouts in this game and to have already two stolen in this one, it's going to be very impressive from them. And the lineout we have got, thank God, it's just a yellow says junior. Yeah, probably could have gone either way in that one. But Mara Toja, the man of the match in his last week's performance up against the Springboks, he has already stolen one in the lineout. Maybe it's no, he hasn't quite got a turnover in the breakdown yet. The lineouts won by the British and Irish Lions. They have won their five. There have been two stolen for the Springbok so far and only the two won. So we've already had nine lineouts. We've had double the lineouts and some in the uh, uh, in this one compared to the last match, which is pretty crazy. But at this stage, there is 30 minutes gone in this match, 10 minutes left of this first half, and then we will have another 30. I think I said 10 minutes left in this match, but I did mean the first half of this one. At this stage, Itzabeth is down as well. So there are plenty of bodies that are being whacked out there on the field. That is for sure. We have got, I made a decision. Uh, we held the South Africa first and second game. Great tour. Better players and the squad. Uh, the Britons uh, forget the results as well, says Adrian. And also we have got um, there. Um, we have got in there uh, no tries yet as well, says Cesar. I feel like, yeah, it's one of those ones. I have got a poll in the chat. If you guys do want to vote on how many tries you think are going to be scored, we will actually have a quick look at the results of that poll while we are waiting for the stoppage in play to be over. But it is going to be a scrum feed. 25 minutes out from the own line here, the box. We've we've had over 400 votes, and everyone has been saying three or four tries are going to be scored in this one. 4% of you have said that there's going to be zero tries in this game, which will be interesting to see whether or not that will be the case. But we are also sitting on 94 likes. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button. Let's see if we can get that. to I would say let's go for 130 by half time. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that like button. We have also got, they should do a Lions versus South Africa, um, ABs and Wallabies team, as well as this Chris Seo. It's possibly the Southern Lions. I know that people have been mentioning that they want to see the British and Irish Lions take on the Southern Lions. Um, though I'm not sure whether or not they will ever get around to doing that, but hopefully we do get to see some more cross hemisphere action. Like I see that now it has been locked in. I think Scotland are going to be playing. Who is Scotland playing? Were they going to be playing Tonga? No, England are playing Tonga. 
I think, if I'm not wrong. There are quite a few cross-hemisphere games happening a little bit later on in the year, which is pretty awesome to see. But now it's going to be the scrum feed for the Springboks now. Like I mentioned, 25 out from their own line. It's going to be Andre Pollard. They're looking like they're going to be attacking here rather than going for the kick. It's going to be Lukanyu Amu just put it onto the kick. Little grubber of mind. Bit of a nothing kick there, but Stuart Hogg is going to be taking that one nicely for the British and Irish lines. And they're going to be 40 metres out from their own line. A little bit of a counter ruck. It's going to be a penalty to the Springboks as well. And I guess it wasn't a nothing kick because they have been able to win that penalty there. The Springboks, and it was against Stuart Hogg, I believe, for not releasing the ball. Oh, tell you what, there is still a lot of tension out on the field. Because Oli Mapimpi, having a bit of a steer off with Stuart Hogg, he has been getting into it with everyone at this stage and any uh, hemisphere combined are not um, able. Thank you as well, says Adrian. And also we have got, it's taken 15 minutes to go from 25 to 30 year. We've had a lot of stoppages, two yellow cards awarded and also quite a few little extra moments in terms of going to the TMO and also just people not really getting along out on the field at the moment. We have got in, in the chat as well, uh, Magna True and also um, as a halftime, not quite. We are still only 30 minutes through this match at this stage. Um, so, yeah, it's been going pretty long, 50 minutes since kickoff or somewhere around 50 minutes, and we've only been going for 30 minutes in this game so far. So it is going to be plenty of rest, and I feel like that's one thing that will benefit both sides. 53.8 metres out, Andre Pollard is going to be backing himself to try and kick this one. It is a harder kick than the previous kick that he did actually end up missing in that situation. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting whether or not he will be able to get it. We have also got there almost at 100 likes. Y'all help the Kiwi lads hitting 100 likes on the stream um, by body slamming the like button and subscribing too much. I appreciate it. It is indeed. So if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We are at the moment on the road to 5,000 subscribers, and we are getting very close. So if you do want to help us out, please do. We have been growing at an insane rate, and it is all thanks to you guys. I cannot hit the subscribe button myself. Uh, because of the fact that that would take a lot of effort to hit it 5,000 times. But now it's going to be Andre Pollard. He's got it well. Has he got enough of it? Yes, he does. Straight down the middle, well struck there from Andre Pollard. And that is more of the kicking game that we know from that man. And now the score is going to be 6-2-6, six, six, going close to half time now. But Stuart Hogg in the end was tackled low by Lukanyu Arm. Then straight on the ball was Makazoli Mapimpi. And he was able to win that turnover. Or the penalty, sorry, for a side for not releasing against Stuart Hogg. Kicked off now by the British and Irish Lions once again. Going just into the 22, taken by Visa now. He hasn't had too much to do in this first half in terms of ball carrying. But I believe he has been trying to get in there, making a few tackles for his side as well. Now it's going to be kicked off short side once again for the Springboks. And it looks like Fafta Clerk now might be considering going for possibly a high boot here. Or not a high boot. That sounds like he's kicking someone in the face. Going for a box kick, I should say. Has gone high there. And once again, there is a bit of physicality going close to the touchline. Oh, it's going to be Mapimpi, who I believe took that ball out. No, it was a foot and touch. So now it is going to be the British and Irish Lions with the line out throw about 30 metres out from the Springboks line. Um, and we have also got their good attack from both sides, but South Africa seem to be more comfortable as well. And yeah, at this stage, the penalty six and six against both sides, which is very even in the last game. 14 against the Springboks, eight against the British and Irish Lions. So it will be interesting to see whether we have more than 24 in this match. We've already had half of them, but Mara Toje in the ball up. Kitsoff almost able to turn that one over in the breakdown, but it is still on the side of the British and Irish Lions. Tyke Furlong getting a big carry there. Mapimpi has ripped that ball away, and it's going to be a penalty. And it was for the hands going down, which now means that the British and Irish Lions will have an opportunity to be able to convert this one and go back to being three points in the head or in the lead. I'm reading the comments, and Hamish is deceiving me. Um, now I had to come back. Or come out, uh, had to come out and go click that like button as well. It says fantastic girls, mate. I do appreciate that very much, mate. For you guys showing your support on these live streams, it has been awesome. Like the amount of you guys who have been tuning in for these, it is currently 5 a.m. here in New Zealand, but we have got quite a few Kiwis who are still tuning in, which is very awesome indeed. And we have got the Great British flag and the Irish flag from you in, in the chat. And I've just joined. Good day, guys, as well. It says Kyle, welcome in, mate. Thank you very much for tuning in. We've had two yellow cards in this match so far. The first one going to Duan Fundamurva, the second going to Chisel and Colby, so one each way. And I believe at this stage, Duan Fundamurva is back out on the field. So this is going to be the man advantage for the British and Irish Lions on this attack. If they can get a rolling ball going, Cowan Dickey, nine times out of 10, will be able to score from here. But the Springboks will have to defend it. Where are they going to be going? They are going right to the back and it's stolen by the Springboks. He's not scoring it if they have got the ball, but it's a bit just forced back. And it does now mean that it is going to be a five-metre scrum because it was taken back by Ed's Beth, but not too many options there. 40 seconds left of the red card, or sorry, the yellow card of Jeslin Colby. Now Kiwi in Brazil. Go the Lions, says Native English, and come on Raw as well, says Adrian. And why is the book uh, low uh, so bad all of a sudden? As well, uh, why is the book low uh, so bad all of a sudden? The book low. I feel like I don't know what the book low is. So maybe I might need a little bit more assistance than that. Keep it um, keep it about the game. They had stuff growing about politics as well, says uh, Drift Wannabe. I assume, is that to me or the guys in the chat? 
Um, because if that is the case here, yeah, normally we have got the Springbok supporters, the Springbok supporters, uh, that was the same thing, Springbok supporters, British and Irish Lions supporters, and then, of course, we have the ones who are down the middle, like myself, total line-outs on this one. That is the first line-out steal, though, for the Springboks in this match. They've had two of their own stolen as well. I've never watched a match with no tries, says Darren Kai. I don't actually think I have either. So I feel like in this situation, if they don't score off the set play here, the British and Irish Lions, we are not going to get to see one in the first half. Jeslin Cobby will be back out on the field after this next stoppage in play and Lions Pro as well um, and says uh, Jokera. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly and also other Lions only wait okay on the scrums. We've had a few of them so far and the only time that it has been a penalty is going to be Marco von Apolbia. Uh-oh, that's going to be possibly Fuff the click now going off the field now. And it is going to be an advantage for the British and Irish Lions, I believe, in that situation. Have they got the advantage? I think it was you know, keeps sticking his arm out for a second. But so far, the scrums have been pretty contested between these two sides. No side really showing their dominance yet. But the Springboks certainly holding their weight in the situation. But Foot Apollo getting sideways now in that tackle. And they have still got this ball. I don't think it was actually an advantage to the British and Irish Lions there. It was just an awkward tackle from Fifth Clerk on in the end. Connor Murray now. It's going to be Tom Curry driving forward. He is going to be tackled low by Bongi But I mean, it's another advantage now. For the British and Irish Lions, they've got a gifted three points here if they want it, if they decide to do it. But at this stage, they did actually turn down three points earlier on in the half. Now it's going to be a kick behind Connor Murray. Robbie Henshaw taking it. He's been tackled up. And it is, oh, he's dropped the ball, has he? Or is it going to be a try? Did he get it down there for Robbie Henshaw? Willie LaRue, what's he doing? He's just trying to tap him on the back of the stage. And I don't know what Willie LaRue is trying to do in that situation. I think he was trying to fire him up at this stage. Try for Robbie Henshaw as well. Says Marco Vodopoli, it could be. In the situation, Mr. Uh, shout out early, uh, Kiwi Lad. Uh, maybe you said uh, you were still in bed. Uh, oh, sorry, uh, Marco in the chat. Yeah, you guys had a little bit of a rivalry earlier on in the seventh live stream. Is this going to be the first try of the match? As soon as we mentioned that, what's your prediction in the NPC rugby? I hope Tasman can win. I think they're right up there. But Auckland, Roger Tuivasa-Sheik, also maybe Solomoni Cutter might be the man that they have signed as well. So they're going to be a hard side to beat. But I ask see also available. Right, they are just checking whether or not Robbie Henshaw has been able to get this ball down. The thing for sure is the ball has come free, but it's whether or not he has put it down and then it's come free or whether or not it is before the ball has made contact with the ground. But at this stage, with whatever happens here, it is going to be the man coming back out onto the field, Chesley like Colby and Duan Fundamur also out there at the moment. Is this going to be a try for Robbie Henshaw? He's taken it very beautifully, that little chip in mind. He's been tackled by three men. Look on your arm. He has been tackled there. Oh, I think that is down. Oh, but the ball on the other side might have come free. I think he might have gotten some contact with the ball on the ground, though. This could be a try for Robbie Henshaw. We are going to have to have a look. Uh, oh, I don't think that's going to be a try. I think there's just enough under that ball to stop Robbie Henshaw from scoring that one. Good defense from South Africa as well in the chat. And also we have got Amos just giving um, me called out Marco Vodopolo there uh, when Marco had the ball as well. I always do that now with the name of the chat. Go Bocco as well, says Philip. And also we have got out, says Tesla, and bring on Vizicog number 18. And then some, says MJ Young. And that's the thing, last match, Green is under that ball as well. That's a no try. Great defense. From the spring box. Oh, yeah, I've got first blood though, says Adrian. Not quite. I believe they are still going to be able to take on the three pointer though. If they do want it, we're just going to have to watch it again. I feel bad for Lucan Yuam. He just gets crushed there. The ball is up. Sia Khaleesi gets his hand under that ball. Lucan Yuam's just causing enough of an upwards, uh, upwards direction of Robbie Henshaw's body by just letting him land on his face. And because of it, it stopped them from being able to score. No try, says Hanger as well. And no try, five minute scrum as well, says Riff Wannabe. And that's the thing. Any competitions that are taking place after the 1st of August, it's not going to be this one. But any competitions from now on are going to have a goal line dropout in that situation. But if you are hold up in goal, it is going to be, or held up in goal, sorry, it is going to be a goal line dropout. So a big change in the rules. Also 50-22s getting added as well. The useless ref will disallow it anyway, says Alex George. And also we have got there, um, Marco, so true. Every time the BI team uh, look good, UK change the rules to stop it and help them. As well, it says uh, Chris Theo. And also we have got, of course, as a dry ref, wants another free dinner with Gatlin as well, says MJ. But at this stage, it is staying as the on-field decision of no try. I'm getting peckish at 5 a.m. in New Zealand. Should have had something to eat before, and you guys can probably hear my stomach rumbling soon. But they are actually checking some foul play, maybe from Fafta Clerk on uh, Connor Murray, are they? They're just showing a replay of it at this stage. So they are actually going to be going upstairs to check this one for Fafta Clerk. I said that it looked like an awkward one when I first saw it. And I think they are going to be checking it once again. And also maybe Umbanambi taking out the kneecaps 
of Tom Curry. They've got a lot to look at. This game is going to go for 60 minutes for the first half by the looks of it with all of the TMO that we've had in that situation. But no, they aren't going to be checking that one at 50 o'clock and they are going to be going for the shot here. Or rather, they're going upstairs once again for that one. Oh no, that was that's actually behind compared to this one. That one has got over, oh, I just banged my hand on the desk and now it's going to be British and Irish Lions 9 and Springboks 6. Four minutes left of this first half at this stage and we have also got a close one as well, says Thick Boy, and also well said, um, and far uh, far front foot for offside as well, says Adrian, um, had no control when it was grounded, that is exactly right, and also because of the fact that Sia Khaleesi able to get that forearm under the ball from Robbie Henshaw, just not quite able to put that ball down, looked like he could have scored, but just not quite meant to be, once again it's going to be taken by Atoje just outside of the 22, Cheslin Colby back out on the field here, and it's a bit saying he's got his hand on the ball, he wants to use it here, and he's just having a little bit of a feel for the ball. Has he been able to get it here? Not quite. And it's going to be Connor Murray, who is now going to be kicking this ball high by the looks of it. Murray Doja just tapping Itzabev on the back. And I believe he has got his hands on that one, Itzabev. But it is going to be a penalty to the spring box. I believe it is for collapsing the mall there in that situation. They say that he did pull it by, uh, down in so much absolute ro uh, rubbish from um, a few in the chat as well as Mick Brown. And also we have got uh, so much time stoppage here. It is an insane amount that we have had so far. 37 minutes gone so far. And we have had an hour worth of the coverage. And we have also got, it's, uh, you see Mara Toshi versus Mots, uh, Mostert clapping in his face as well. Says Marco Von Apollo. I did not see it, but I know that both sides are well and truly fired up. That one has not found touch from the British and Irish lines. Would have been a very good kick of it had, making a lot of meters. But now it's going to be another opportunity for the Springboks to counter. Yeah, oh, it's going to be an awkward fall for Andre Apollo. But he has actually taken it like a champ. Took a, uh, I think he actually took a bit of a slap to the face, or not a slap to the face, but on the way down, did end up contacting Robbie Henshaw's arm. Uh, and in that situation, he's just got straight back up. And now Lions are going to have this ball. Three and a half minutes, sorry, two and a half minutes left in this first half. And at this stage now, it is going to be a high kick once again from Connor Murray. It is going to be Stuart Og. No, it's the one, but a mover trying to take it as a massive knock on. They're going about 20 metres. And the Springboks now are going to have this ball inside of their own 22. Andre Apollo, what an offload that is. Out into the hands of Kwaha Smith. And they're going back for the scrum. Two many metres lost there. But Duan Fundamuva was the man who dropped that one. This is the longest half ever. An hour gone and not half time yet, says Carl Peterson. Luckily, I believe we've only got two minutes left at this stage. So hopefully we do get to half time before not too long. But I feel like it's going to be about a 6.30 or so a.m. finish here in New Zealand rather than around that kind of 6.10 or so. And we have got as the first half, um, or if the first half was as hectic, or, or sorry, if the first half is as hectic as the second um, half, it is going to be brutal, yeah. There's going to be, like people have mentioned, there's going to be a bit of push and shove in that second half. We've already seen it so far. Just call Lions, uh, just call us Lions, mate. As well as this smoke. And I know that some people actually get annoyed with that, but I will call them Lions if you guys in the chat are all right with it. Uh, Lions will take the box apart. Second half says wind-ups. And also, we have got in there, come on, boys, a try, says uh, Jolani. Hopefully, I'll pronounce that correctly, but I feel like I may have got that slightly wrong. Just joins. How's it been? So far, we've had a lot of penalties. In this game, once again, there has been a yellow card for Duan van der Merwe. There's also been a yellow card for Chislin Colby. Both sides receiving that yellow. Both sides. Also, there's been a bit of push and shove out there. No tries yet, which is going to be the case. If we go to halftime, there's going to be two first halves of the two test matches that we haven't had a single try. Going to be interesting. But now they are going to have another chance here. The Springboks, great push there for the British and Irish Lions. Oh, but it is the front rows going down. So that is probably pretty lucky for the Springboks. They're back and forth, and then it went down. In the front row, Luke Cowan taking not too happy with it. Franz Mahalba is under a lot of pressure from Marco Von Apollo, who's having a very good first half so far. And we have also got a roar from Adrian in the chat. And also almost time for a smoke break, aka halftime as well. Says Carl Peterson. But I will mention that anyone who is going to be short of that subscribe button, also leave a like on this live stream if you haven't already. It is hugely appreciated. We said we try and hit 130 by halftime. We're sitting on 128 at the stake. So we are close. So if you guys do want to help us out, be sure to leave a like and it's hugely appreciated also if you are new to the channel be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are in a position to do so and you want to show a little bit more support to the channel as well there is the option of the channel membership so be sure to hit that button if that is something you guys would like to do as well you get access to the exclusive emojis such as the ones that kg and uh, also marco von apollo have been using in the chat throughout this one um this match shall be a draw says philip as well and that's the thing if it's a draw that would once again also secure the win for the british and irish lions in the series because of the fact that from there or sorry it wouldn't secure the win but it would mean that they can't lose from here they would only be able to draw the series now it's going to be fafta clerk going back to the short side that is the halftime siren now and it looked like fafta clerk seems like he is going to be kicking this one high to put the ball back in the court oh he is going to be kicking it into touch and now it is going to be halftime and the score is going to be nine to the british and irish lions six to the Springboks, so it's going to be very close. 
in the second half once again. What was the score at the end of the first half in the last one? I believe it might have been 12 to 3 to the Springboks, if I'm not wrong. And they are talking already in the media about whether or not that Gallo card of Chisel and Colby was enough. But that is what the referees decided to give it as. So now we will look at some of the stats in this first half as well. And we have got the box mistake on their fault. Playing like children in the box. Schoolboy Rugby as well, says Honorick. And also we have got in the chat, Kieran Bumfa Troy. And also in the chat from Tesla. Those are all the emojis that we do have available on the channel. I want to draw one third match as a decider. Says fantastic. So would it be better for it to be the Springboks win this one so that it is going to be whoever wins that third match wins the series? Or is it that kind of maybe having it so that the Springboks have got that one as a little bit of a backup in that situation of being able to be in a situation of not being able to lose this one. We have it's got your go as well. Says Darren Kai and also we have got in there. Um, I was getting juicy the next 40 minutes. Hope it doesn't end up 60 minutes like the first half as well. Says Marco Vito uh, What did you think of fifth or oh, uh, fifth tackle? Ah, uh, I said that very strange. I'm not sure what exit that was, but I think in that situation, they didn't actually really have too much of a look at it, but it did seem like an awkward one. When I first saw it, I did say that it looked a little bit high, but they decided against it because I think they were looking at Bongi Umbarambi's uh, tackle on Curry as well with the low taking out the legs which of course is something else that's going to be changing in the rules in the future uh, competitions because of the fact that any competition that starts after this, so that actually means now that I think about it, the Bunnings NPC, the New Zealand Provincial Competition, we are going to have 50-22s, if I'm not wrong, uh, which is going to be interesting. Lions will win-win-win as well, says Mick, and also the British and Irish Lions won't last a 120-minute game, as well, says MJ Young, and uh, the last game yesterday, NZ versus the Japan lasted 120 minutes. As well, says Tesla, did we end up getting the win? Although I feel like if no one's mentioned it, maybe... It would have ended up that we lost in penalties. Perhaps I'm tired of uh, fifth box looking, uh, not out of the box thinking at all. Says hanging around, and that's the thing. In the first half, it was actually South Africa who did the basic box kick, and I feel like it worked a couple of times for them. But also, when you look at how the tries have almost been scored by the British and Irish lines, that one of Robbie Henshaw, it was that little chip in behind. Also, they've got those other options in terms of going for the cross kicks trying to find Duan van der Merwe with the big height that he's got, six foot five. He is, he is deceptively tall, although he's a solid unit, but I think people don't realise he is six foot five. So it's one of those ones, I think if they keep on using that kicking game in the second half, the British and Irish lines, it may actually end up benefiting, uh, benefiting them sorry, a lot more. And we have also got the Ferns, uh, just got that awesome uh, Sonny Bill as well, says in the chat, uh, says Adrian, of course, they were able to get that gold medal, which was pretty awesome for them. In the uh, uh, Tokyo Sevens, I should say, but at this stage, 60% possession for the British and Irish Lions. Early on in this first half, it seemed like the Springboks were going to have the better territory, but in the end, 61% to the British and Irish Lions in that one penalties. They have been able to kick three, the British and Irish Lions, compared to the two of the Springboks. 74 metres carried here for the Springboks compared to the 44 of the British and Irish Lions. The Springboks, though, this is a big stat. For those 74 metres, they haven't beaten a single defender, haven't had a clean break. For the 44 metres that the British and Irish Lions have had, that they have carried the ball, they've bet six defenders, and they have been able to make one clean break. But although these stats normally aren't too accurate at times, so we will have to wait and see whether or not that will be the case. Because it does say that at this stage, the Springboks have made 90 tackles, and they have actually missed six. Oh, sorry, they've made 84 tackles, missed six. And the Springboks, 52 from 52 for their tackling so far. We have us got Chris Wood as a pretty good forward, though, um, on the subject of football. Did he end up scoring... In that one, do let me know. Uh, in that match, was it one all going into the penalty shooter or was it nil all? Um, as well, good commentary. But today, I um, don't think you will keep up. Tell you what, the way that it's been going at the moment, I feel like my voice is going to be gone by the end of it. We have already commentated the Tokyo Women's Sevens today. I did actually end up going to sleep after that final to wake up early for this one. And at this stage, I'm starting to get to that hungry stage. You know when you've been awake for about an hour? Oh, actually, it's been over two and a half hours so far. And we have only seen the first half of this game. But you know when you kind of, end up waking up and then it's kind of around that two hours or so after you start to get a little bit peckish but then you're in that situation of after about five minutes it goes away so that's what I had in the first half but luckily hopefully I will be able to last till the end of this match how many minutes um is this uh half time as well I believe they do 10 minutes for half time which is a little bit of a wee while but we will be able to fill it in beautifully hopefully because of the fact that we have got the lineups so looking through the starting lineup of South Africa once again players who aren't on the field anymore Peter Steftatoy, he did get injured, so that means Kwaha Smith is going to be filling in. And I'm not sure whether or not he is going to be playing at seven or whether it will be Visa, who does transfer possibly uh, to that role. I'm not too sure what they will go with there. But also, players for the Springboks who have been going well in this match so far, I would say the likes of a few of their physical forwards have been doing pretty well. The likes of, um, I would say, Itzabeth, 
had a pretty decent game overall, although he did end up collapsing that more a little bit later on. But I would say overall, there hasn't been any huge standouts for the Springboks. I feel like that sounds harsh, but I don't think anyone has had an absolutely incredible game so far in terms of that you put them a mile above the rest. They've all had pretty solid performances, but no one's really at that um, kind of 10 out of 10 performance at the moment. The yellow card for Cheslin Colby could be an interesting one leading into the second half, but also... For the British and Irish Lions, someone who received the yellow card, it was Duan van der Merwe out on that wing. He ended up getting it for kicking Chisel and Colby. Chisel and Colby ended up taking out the player in the year, which did give him a yellow, which has already sparked a lot of controversy. We've had it already. As soon as I looked up the stats of this match, it was whether or not that should have been a red card for Chisel and Colby, but they gave it as a yellow. Vunapola, for me, has had a very solid first half, as well as I would say, if I had to pick one other player um, and you had to twist my leg for another player who was playing well, I had another player earlier on in the first half, and I can't remember who I said it was. I'd say overall, Connor Murray hasn't been doing terribly in this one. And also, Robbie Henshaw, if he gets a little bit more of the ball in the second half, he can be a dangerous player as well. Uh, but yeah, we will have to wait and see. We have got a whole people in the chat, or a whole heap of people in the chat, I should say. Uh, Nilo lost 4 2 in the penalties, says Chris. So, I mean, that's a win in my books for New Zealand anyway, though, because oh, it's not a win on the uh, actual books, of course, because of the fact they were about $12 to $1.03 for being able to win that match up against Japan. So to be able to push them all the way to a penalty shootout, in my opinion, is just very well done. Well, what a first half as well. I said, but yeah, lot happening in that one. That is for sure. 143 likes as well. So thank you all very much for that. It is hugely appreciated, the amount of support that we have had on this one. Um, and we have also got there. Well, this commentator female has very, very beautiful hairstyle. Wicked as well, says Marco Von there. But yeah, it's one of those ones, a 60-minute first half, almost 70 minutes the way that it was going because of the fact that the TMO had a lot to do in that first one. How many cards will be in the second half, says Chris Seo. I think uh, it's it's one of those ones, it's 50-50. It's either going to be one more red, I think, in this one, or it's going to be no more cards because of the fact that both of these guys will want to make sure that they don't end up giving away any more uh, penalties because of the fact both sides already given away about seven each in this situation. Good game to win for the box as well, says Bertie V. And yeah, it is close enough that it is certainly not over yet for either of these sides. Should have been off, no doubts, as well, says McBrown. For that, Cheslin Colby won, and who won the women's sevens. It was New Zealand. They won the final up against France, so they got the gold. France got the silver. And in the end, the score in that game was 26 points to 12. Then in the Fiji versus, it was Fiji versus Great Britain. Great Britain once again getting fourth, and it was Fiji who were able to get that one and get the win 20, or sorry, 21 points to 12 in that one. And in the end, it was... Tim Figger actually took quite a big hit in the spine from Mbunambi there. But in that situation of the Chisel and Colby one. But yeah, they were able to get the win. So Fijiana got the bronze medal for the women's and got the gold in the men's as well. So a very good day at the office for both the men's and the women's sides. So looking at the benches though in this game, we have already seen Kwaha Smith has come off the field or come on the field. Sorry, that is for Peter Stafter Toy. The other subs that they've got available, Malcolm Marks, River Nakanye. Also, it will be Vincent Koch. So that is the front row. Now, last game, they made all of their subs at the very start of the second half. I'm wondering whether or not they will try and save them for a little bit later. Definitely. Oh, but it's a hard one because they've already played 60 minutes. So maybe they will actually look at making those subs straight away because of the fact that these guys who are out there at the moment will be pretty tired. We have got Luta uh, Diaga as well as an option for the uh, Springboks. Also, Marco van Staden with the extra forward. And it's probably a good thing because of that injury of Peter Stafford Toy that they have got that option. Then Herschel Yankees and also Damian Valimza will be the only two spare backs. Then for the British and Irish lines, they have not gone to the bench yet. They have got Ken Owens, Rory Sutherland, Kyle Sinclair had a decent game off the bench last week. Ty Byrne, he is in phenomenal form, and I have really enjoyed watching him play throughout this tour. Also, Talupe Falatel, another dangerous ball runner off the back of the scrum. That could be lethal for the British and Irish lines later in this match. But the South African side, I would say they probably had that little bit of an edge in the scrum, but well and truly in the line-out was the British and Irish lines with their two line-out steals that they were able to get. Ali Price, replacement halfback, for this one, Owen Barrell, who was able to slot over a couple of the important penalties in that last week's match. And then also Elliot Daly, who was starting at 13 for the last match. But now he is going to be coming off the bench in this one. We have also got in there, um, well, awesome stuff, brother, as well. Says Bertie V. And also we have got in the chat as well. That was a little bit earlier on. I've realized I've missed quite a few messages. We have also got great commentary. Says Katie Dixon with the 10 out of 10 in the chat. Thank you very much. I do appreciate that. Amish, you are a legend, mate. Says Bertie V. And yeah, at this stage, I have to say, Katie, I hope you do enjoy that 10 out of 10 emoji. We did add it with you in mind because of the fact that you always say it. And also the Kiwi Lance ball in there as well looks very nice. But my favorite emoji by far involves this man right here. And it is Kieran. He looks pretty deflated at the moment in this matchup. I would say these players out there are probably pretty deflated in regards to the amount 
of tackles that they've had to make. But the, yeah, at this stage, meters made, there haven't been too many at all for either side in this one. 74 for the Springboks, but they haven't been able to beat any defenders yet at this stage. Um, we have also got in their beautiful stadium, says Katie Dixon. It is indeed Cape Town Stadium used to be, or oh, it is actually the DHL Stormers' new home ground, I believe from this year, if I'm not wrong. Um, but someone in the chat might be able to help us out in that regard. Um, what about the foul play in the game? Uh, do you think the game might end without more players going to the bin, says Moses? In the back of my mind, I think we're going to see another card because of the fact that we have already seen a yellow for each side. But then that also can sometimes make teams make sure that their discipline is a lot better in that second arm. Um, the foul player is distracting from this game. Yeah, I feel like it's one of those ones. It's been very physical between these two sides. There's been a bit of push and shove as well. Um, we might get a sevens game for 40 minutes as well, says Chris. Yeah, imagine that. How many are you actually allowed to go down to? I assume you can just keep on losing players up until, because I have seen in the past at club level this is, not international level, if you get that many red cards, like the referee has got the ability of just calling off the game. Um, the Kiwi, ref, uh, Kiwi ref, sorry, cards galore, says Adrian. And also, once again, I will mention I am from New Zealand, but I am not responsible for the ref because of the fact that I know that some people might end up in that situation of thinking that because I'm from New Zealand, I support all of the decisions that he does make in this game. Hamish, can we get a George not impressed emoji uh, when someone misses the kick? Says Sebastian, I feel like that is actually a very good idea. I'm going to write that one down because I know that we wanted an emoji of each of our faces. And the thing with the emojis for the uh, channel memberships is to be able to unlock more emojis, YouTube make it so you have to have a certain amount of members. So unfortunately, we're not quite at the stage of being able to unlock too many more emojis yet. But once we keep on increasing in that um, kind of members number, it does mean that we will be able to keep on adding them. But George not impressed. I'm sure he will absolutely love to have that as one of the emojis for that one. But anyone who does want to become the channel member to help us out a little bit, it is the pin comment there in the chat. It pretty much gives you access to all of the emojis. Also member only live streams when we do start them up as well, which is going to be hopefully not too far away um, in terms of the fact that Hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we will be able to get some up and running as well. And we have also got Yushu's Order some online as well. And that was for, um, that was five of uh, the best tasting uh, lager as well for Lauren as well. And we have also got the uh, TJQ and also great ideas, says Marco von I am going to write it down for that suggestion because I feel like it is a very good one indeed. But anyone who isn't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It is hugely appreciated. All of the support you guys have been showing on the channel. And yeah, it just makes it even that much more fun to be getting up at 5.15 a.m. or actually we got up at 2.30 a.m. But to be able to do these live streams, I absolutely love it. And I hope you guys have been enjoying. But I will put the link for anyone who is interested. That is for the link to the channel memberships, uh, if anyone does want to do it. It is not uh, compulsory, though. Uh, so don't feel pressured into that at all. We have what's got there. Um, you have more viewers than two cents. And for real sports, says uh, Marco Vodopil, a polar bear, which is pretty awesome that we have been able to have such support on an early morning live stream at this stage. And also we have got closed down. Um, I was informed last visit to South Africa in 2002 as well says Mick Brown and also we have got um but then who does uh who wants uh who wants any Celtic club as well says the MC and also the rugby isn't good today um because this uh guy's not playing rugby that's uh that's match it's a soccer match as well says Philip yeah at this stage it seems like it's one of those ones um yeah it's it's gonna be an interesting second half because the fact we've had a lot of players all just not liking each other at this stage out on the field there's been push and shove but there's also been some very good moments for both sides. Almost a try for the British and Irish Lions with Robbie Henshaw. Early chance for the Springboks as well. But they weren't quite able to capitalise. So it's one of those ones. Whoever takes their chance in the second half, it could be the only try of the match. So we'll have to wait and see what we have got in there as well. Uh, South Africa is executing better um, and just or, but just need to connect well. Lions are applying good pressure. But we need to get down in their territory with the penalty advantages. South Africa will hold on to survive whether it's by one as well. Says the snooze. Yeah, that's the thing. At this stage... There were a total of around 14 penalties in that first half. And also, like in that situation, the territory 38% to the Springboks. So most of their attack in that 22 of the Springboks, or sorry, of the British and Irish Lions was actually in that first half. It, well, uh, that was a dumb statement. But also it was in the first kind of 10 minutes or so. Uh, just uh, uh, just sub pro as well, says Halitha. Thank you very much. It is hugely appreciated. All the support you guys have been showing on these live streams, like I mentioned. And at this stage, we are pushing towards 4,200 subscribers which is absolutely incredible. So I do thank you all very much for that. We are currently sitting on 4,186. Can we push towards 4,200 before 10 minutes into the second half? I feel like we could do it. We are also looking at 165 likes we will go to before 10 minutes into the second half. Yeah, if you want to uh, help us out with that, please do. But at this stage, possession 56% for the British and Irish Lions. It's actually 44% 
for the Springboks for their territory. So the 38 that I saw was a little bit off there. And body slam the like button, y'all. We're at 200, or sorry, 150. Let's get to two, uh, 200, please. And thank you. Says Katie Dixie. We're, uh, sorry, Katie Dixon. Tell you what, I'm having a struggle with my words at the moment. I'm excited. For the second half, it's close once again. Only three points difference in the first match between these two sides. It was a total of nine points difference, I believe, at halftime. We're about to New Zealand. I am in South Canterbury. Uh, so whether or not you know where that is, uh, do let me know. But now it is going to be kicked off for the second half. It is going to be Dan Bigger getting the second half underway for the British and Irish Lions. Going to be taken very nicely there by Franco Mostert. And I believe at this stage, when will both sides go to the sub bench? Because of the fact that it is going to be a very draining second half. If it is anything like the first as well, anyone listen to 6-9 as well. Says this, I haven't actually uh, listened to it, but how long is halftime? I believe it was about 10 or 15 minutes in that situation. I believe 10. But now it's going to be a high ball jog, just knocking that ball on a little bit. And now it is going to be going back for the scrum. And tell you what, Duan Fundamur has got a big smile on his face there. We need to bump off after uh, Fafta Clerk. It's weird. There's, there's weird moments in this game. Like these guys are loving the physicality of this game, but they're also seeming to be having a fun time out there. As I like Duan Vandermeer, he shunted off Fafta Clerk and they just give each other a big smile and a bit of a tap to say, well done there, mate. But Fafta Clerk's a hard little man, that is for sure. Um, I do. I live in Ashburton. As well, says uh, Sir MC. So only around an hour and a bit up the road. From where I do live, six nice trash as well, says Chris Seo. But at this stage now, scrum feed for the Springboks, 45 metres out from their own line, and they need to make sure they're the first team to score in this second half, because, or they'll be the first team to score in this match as well. For those who are wondering, we did have a poll at the start of this match. 5% of you have said that there could be a chance of zero tries being scored in this match. 28% have said one to two, and 44 has said three to four, with a few more going for five plus in this one, although I think that number will be rapidly decreasing at this stage now, it is now going to be Ben O'Keefe with another stern warning to the front rows out there on the field at the moment. They need to make sure that the scrum does not go down because of the fact that if it does, it is an easy penalty to one of these sides in the spring box at this stage. They have got the front row of kits off, 50 of test match for him. And what I'll be very skilled player as well. Would love a rolling ball later on in this match, perhaps. And then also it is going to be Franz Mahalwa on the other side. They have got the options off the bench, though of Vincent Cock, Malcolm Marks, and also it is uh, Trevor Nakanye. That one's gone down on the front row, and it is going to be the penalty to the Springboks now. We have also got there, uh, is that Canterbury uh, or Camel Canterbury uh, in uh, Hamilton? It is actually at South Island, Canterbury. So it is the Crusaders' home ground, or the Crusaders' home area, I guess you could say, uh, that I do live in as well. But I am halfway in between there, and also it is going to be the Highlanders. So it's one of those ones that, at this stage, um, yeah, it is. I'm kind of halfway in between, so that's why I'm pretty impartial in Super Rugby. Um, I voted for zero tries this game as well. Says says, like, although the game is not over yet, and the Springboks have now going to be having that wasn't a sentence. I've now ended up in the situation of being able to go for that line out drive about 22 meters out, uh, or Tim Roos, 30 minutes south from there. I'm wondering how good your ge uh, geography is of the area, so maybe you will be able to get it, but yeah, about half an hour south of Tim Roo. Let's see whether or not, yeah, I've got it, but now it's going to be taken nicely there. By Eben Etzebeth in the line out going for the rolling ball once again here. And it is going to be the situation of Umbunambi off the back. Like I mentioned, I'd love, love to be able to get himself a rolling ball try, but it's going to be a little bit hard to do from 30 metres out. But all of a sudden, it's going to be cut down to 25. Now it's gone down to 20, and now Umbunambi has broken off the back, and he is trying to drive forward. Tackle by Vonapola. For me, he was one of the standouts in the first half for the British and Irish Lions. And he seems like he is going to be keeping up that intensity in the second half. It's going to be Dealender now tackled on the 22 here. And going back across field are going to be the Springboks. See, it's a bit first carry of the match for him. Running straight at Ty Furlong. Actually, no, he ran at Ty Furlong earlier on. Didn't work out for him too well. That one has been high from Andre Bola. Willie LaRue trying to knock it back for a side. It's going to be almost taken by It was going to be Duan for the move. But now Damien Dealender takes it 10 metres out now from the British and Irish Lions line, and they are pouring on the pressure here. The Springboks have got a backline opportunity. Willie LaRue, they have got Chislin Cobby out on the outside. Gives it to Khaleesi, who steps back on the inside here. And he is going to be dragged down. Chris Harris straight on that ball. The ball is pop free, though. So he wasn't quite able to turn it over. Now it's going to be Stephen Katzoff driving forward. How great would it be for that man to be able to score in his 50th test for the Springboks? He's probably only got to get the next 10 minutes or so. Little kick across field from Andre Paul. I'm taken by my pimpy, and he's gone. And that's going to be the try to the Springboks, the first try of the match and the first try for the spring box which now gives them a very good opportunity i was about to update my scoreboard i've realized i've got this automatic one next to me makes it a lot easier indeed but at this stage makazoli mapimpi able to score the try out on that left wing 
And it is his 15th test match, I believe they just said. But Fuff de Klerk in the end went back. Then the kick in behind from Andre Pollard, I said at halftime that it was the Lions doing the more dynamic kicking game and that the Springboks needed to change it from just a box. <laughs> and that is exactly what they've done. Andre Pollard, great kick in behind. Mapimpi taking it, breaking the tackle as Joel, driving through the tackle of Conan as well. And he scores it as well. Uh, there will be a try in the last 10 minutes, if not two as well. So he's hanging around. And also we have got a vote of uh, five tries plus the prediction as well and truly falling off its face. Maybe not. We've just seen the first one as well. And we have also got in there um, Hamilton as well a little bit earlier on. But we have got Timaru uh, as well. And it's two cents from New Zealand. He is indeed. So he would have gotten up at the early hours of the day as well. We have also got from Mako Vodopolo. We have two sound sins, uh like he's falling asleep forever. Sounds nervous. Uh, and Tins Guru doesn't sound too enthusiastic about this book. And Kiwi Lads is doing an excellent, uh, excellent job as per usual legend. As I said, Marco Vodopolo, I assume Gareth Mason is also covering it as well. I think he is the only other uh, one who would be doing it possibly. He's missed that one, Andre Pollard. So it's only going to be a two-point difference now. Um, and we have also got there. Well done. Kinders, as well, says McBrown. And also, we have got their lines on the street since drawing New Zealand. And Omaru says, uh, sir, too far south. That would be about an hour south of Timaru. Halfway in between Timaru and Omaru. Uh, let's see whether or not uh, you have got that one. And we have got pressure, boys. Let's go, says sir. And also, we have got in there, um, that is rugby, guys, says Philip. And it is modern-day rugby at its finest because of the fact they do decided to go for an extra kind of one that maybe you wouldn't expect to see in a test match. The cross kick is something that is possibly underutilized in just normal play because of the fact if you've got a penalty advantage, normally they will go for it. But this is a situation of Jasper Visa, unfortunately dropping that ball off kickoff. So now it's going to be a scrum for the British and Irish line. So another chance for them to either be able to get that penalty or possibly push themselves out wide for a set play. We have got Bingo told you as well as MJ and also our uh, Wales and Fuff sent off. Um, good question, although I think it was something to do with the fact um, I'm not sure what they actually said on the TMO, so I feel like whatever I say there might be wrong. So I will be best to say no comment at this stage. And also the last game uh, has started, folks. Took an hour and a half as well. Says Desla for this one. And also we have got in there, are uh, the line still a man down? No, they are not. And also the Springboks also have their 15 out on the field. So it's in that situation of both sides here. Discipline's going to be important. In the second half, Bola left his kicking boots at home. Hope it doesn't come back to haunt him, uh, much like Bowden Barrett's. Done us Kiwis in 2017 as well. And we always got Omaru for sure. Says, sir, it is half an hour uh, north of Omaru in that one. And we always got probably dusted off the World Cup speech as a well says hanger at. But at this stage now, currently sitting only a total of seven minutes into this first half. This seven and a half has flown by. Or sorry, seven minutes has flown by, I should say, because of the fact that we haven't had too many stoppages so far. But I will mention, while well, we have got this little bit of a stoppage, if you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It is hugely appreciated. All the support you guys have been showing. But we have also got their Pollard been a surprising weak link in the last two tests, says Thick Boy. His kicking hasn't been good, but that cross kick was phenomenal from him. That's going to be a big brush here from the British and Irish Lions. It's going to be a uh, scrum reset, I believe that is actually. In that situation, not going to be a free kick. So now because of it, the scrum was going sideways and it is going to be a scrum reset here for the Lions. We have got British and Irish Lions. It's going to lose. Um, who agrees? Please respond as well, says Vincent. At this stage, I know that we've got a few people in the chat who would absolutely love to see that happen so that it goes to the third match. Being the decided, we've also got there. Um, does he uh, get the kick? Unfortunately, he did miss that one, Andre Pollard. So that is going to be, at the moment, two from four for him today. I believe, if I'm not wrong, Pollard is disappointing. Um, if I, uh, it will uh, mean a loss if it comes for a few points. He's hanging around as well. And also we have got um, Hoss, I am, uh, Mitchell's plane. Uh, your accent sounds like someone who try, uh, took helium as well. <laughs> and Sonny Bill uh, in the chat says, Gal, I appreciate you being here, I think. Maybe, but thank you very much for tuning in, mate. And it's usually appreciated. Yeah, my voice at this stage, I think it is slowly warming up, which I feel like is why it sounds a little bit rough. But it was because of the fact I was sleeping before this live stream take uh, or took place, I should say. But now 48 minutes in and it's going to be now the option for the British and Irish Lions. It's wheeling around. Too much movement, and it is going to be another scrum reset. A little bit of a tap on the head there from Callan Dickey on Franz Mahaba. I'm not sure whether he's the man you want to fire up in this situation. Pollard falling off, says Tesla as well. And also we have got drop kick um, near the end, and maybe says Tesla. It could be certainly an option. We have also got, um, if no one told you, you are worthy, uh, worthy of happiness, says Gail as well. So I do appreciate that, mate. And thank you very much for tuning in as well. Marcus Smith is looking down on Pollard right now. Says Sebastian, and also we have got Careful Vooney, um, those noxious gases. As well as Adrian, and also we have got didn't hear Day uh, Dialendo's name. What uh, or uh, didn't hear Day uh, Damian Dialendo's name once in a while. I think he has only touched the ball maybe twice if he's lucky in this one. Pollard uh, should the uh, Colby kick those penalties. Perhaps Susan Colby goes for that 55 meter out drop kick. Did he get it from 55? Was it in the game up against uh, or for to lose? I should say. Um, damn it, can't watch it um, anywhere online. Says Mark Smith. Yeah, unfortunately, 
due to the copyright, they end up taking down every live stream that does try and show it, unfortunately, other than if it is just the commentary. So, yeah, I wish I was able to show the game and have me as the commentary alongside that game. But unfortunately, yeah, they don't actually let you do that on YouTube. So I do apologize in advance for that. But Henshaw now gives it to Connor Murray. Now goes back bigger. Backline movement here looking like it's opening up for the Lions. And it is going to be a good low tackle from Lucanio Arm and Damian Dialende making the tackle there. And he's actually ended up holding him up there. And because of it, it's going to become a tackle. They have to release it. It's in the hands of Kwaha Smith. And that is going to be the penalty to the British and Irish Lions. And that could give them the lead back. And this one, is, uh, even would kick the ball out of the stadium as well. says Tesla. It will with the thunder thighs that that man has. He is a powerhouse in the gym and also out on the field. That is for sure. And he could be a very good asset for them later on in this match. Dan Bigger looking like he is going to be lining up this kick for the British and Irish Lions to be able to give them three points as, or sorry, um, three more points. What's happening now? Mostert's just picking up that ball at this stage. He's just stolen the ball. So what's happened there? At this stage, a shot's going to be called. Yeah, he just went up and he ran and stole that ball. Um, I don't like the effect this video has had on the game. This I feel like I'm jinxing it big time. At this, oh, sorry. I thought you meant this video, but I know that you mean now. Rassia Mas, uh, Rasmus is one. And Jerry has said, slow down, Chief. Yeah, I feel like my brain's running at 1,000 miles an hour purely because of the fact that I feel like with just commentary, you can kind of take it slowly. But then with it being split between the chat and also the commentary, I end up kind of speed running it because we got over 500 people watching at the moment. So I do try and read out every single message, although I end up missing some. So I do apologize for that. But now 51 minutes in, Dan Bigger going to be taking on another kicking opportunity. Currently sitting three from 300%. And this one's going to be 34 meters out to give the Lions a lead back by one point. If he can't get this one, um, that is true. Um, Mora is better as well, says Jan. And also we have got in there high risk, only having one goal kicker on the field, says NJ. But at this stage now, it is going to be Dan Bigger kicking this one, trying to line it up here. Dan Bigger, 100% so far. And that's how it's not going to stay because he has hit the post and it has come back out. And now Fafta Clerk inside of the 22 gives it out now to Mapimpi. And he has kicked that one downfield. It's a very big kick as well. Found the touchline. And that is a brilliant clearing kick there from the spring box. But that is the first miss kick. I put the commentator's curse on him there once again. And we have got Boko, says Mora. But I do appreciate all you guys being here once again. I have mentioned it many times. If you haven't already been sure to vote in that poll with how many tries you think are going to be scored in the match, 30% of you have said one to two and 43% have said three to four. And we're also sitting on 161 likes, which is absolutely incredible. I think we may be able to push towards 200 by the end of this match. Shane Bigger as well says um, Nick Brown and he missed as well. Said fantastic. Who scored, says Tristan? It was uh, Makazoli Mapimpi who was able to pick up the try. And also we have got Miss, says Heinrich. And I guess, oh, sorry, Missed. And he did indeed. Now it's going to the front there. Mara Toje taking it nicely there for the British and Irish Lions. That one has gone down in the mall. It's going to be Cowan Dickey breaking off the side runner straight. And Umbunami is opposite number who has tackled him on the halfway line now. Connor Murray rolling the ball backwards once again. Looking for the high ball perhaps here. And he has been able to kick it very nicely. Going to be Jack Conan lining up. This one wasn't quite able to take it. It's going to be Viso who was able to take it. Jumping over the top of three Springboks almost. The ball for Mara Toje in the breakdown, but he wasn't quite able to keep the hands on a Honre Pola once again going for a bit of a cross kick here. Jeslin Colby trying to line it up, but it was in the end. Stuart Hogg, who was able to take it very nicely, been pretty safe under the high ball, other than I think he's dropped one so far in this match. Now it is going to be Connor Murray gives it to Alan Wynn. Jones nailed in the tackle by Jasper Visa there. That was a big hit to the legs of Alan Wynn Jones. He has returned from a shoulder injury, but that one would have been hurting the kneecaps a little bit there. Fafta Clerk straight on the ball there, leaving his feet a little bit, but he wasn't quite able to get it now. Counter ruck once again from the Springboks trying to get it back, but the Lions are hanging on to it very nicely. Kits off trying to contest. That is one thing that I have noticed in the last few minutes is the Springboks are just very hungry to try and get that ball back while they are inside of the 22, or sorry, inside of the half of the British and Irish line. Short kick there, going to be almost taken by Visa. Almost a little knock on there though. And it is now going to be the Lions who are going to have the first knock on there. So it is going to be the scrum feed for the Springboks. We have got in there, um, Pumfa in the chat from Katie. And also we have got there, uh, Lois tackling with that nose. So that's a fantastic. I assume that is for Quahir Smith's uh, nose. And yeah, I feel like, how many times has that man broken his nose? Do let me know in the chat if you guys know Lions are multiple countries. Unfair right off um, the bat as well. Says so although I think that is the whole point of the tour. And terms of it is multiple nations taking on the Southern Hemisphere, who have won the most World Cups out of North and South, which I feel like that is kind of the reasoning behind it. I know that there's a lot of history behind it as well, but it looks like it is Mbunami down at the moment with a little bit of a finger injury, but like someone is mentioning, maybe it is time to bring on the subs 
at this stage. While we have got a stoppage in play, though, we will look at the subs benches for anyone who hasn't seen them already. The one change already made by South Africa, and it was Kwaha Smith who had to come out on the field. That is because of the injury of Peter Stefter Toy. Then I've still got Marks, who didn't look in any hurry to make his way out onto the field, still had the mask on. So I think they are going to be holding off as late as they can the spring box and really have that injection of the extra forwards coming into the game late because of the fact that they did lose that extra forward advantage with Kwaha Smith making his way out onto the field for the toy. So now they are trying to hold off as long as they can, I think, to be able to have these guys put out 110% and then come off the bench with 120 And that might be what they need in the later stages of this one. But so far, Alwyn Jones, six carries, two metres made, four game line success, nine tackles made. And also it is going to be turnovers one, just the one so far for that man. But then for the British and Irish Lions, the likes of Farrell, he was cool, calm and collected under pressure for those kicks late in the match. For Lupe Felital, dangerous ball runner. Tyke Byrne, dangerous ball runner. Kyle Sinclair, very good as well. Both benches are going to be stacked for the later stages of this match, and I'm looking forward to it as well. We have got Southern Hemisphere has seven World Cups in hand, and the North has one as well. And we have also got there, Nokurai says, it, YouTube user, and also, uh, yeah, considering the chance haven't played much, um, you'd think the Lions would walk all over the box. No, uh, no imagine a well-trained, well-prepared box side versus the Lions as well. And that's one thing, the Springboks have heart. Like, as one of those ones, they won the World Cup final, and they're just one of those sides, definitely at home. They're going to put 110% up there on the field all times. Yes, the first match didn't go their way, but then you've also got to say there is no crowd. And I feel like they would absolutely love to have the crowd erupting in this game at the moment with their two-point lead that they have got after 54 minutes. But we will have to wait and see whether or not it will be enough. Um, what do you notice about uh, 2007, or sorry, 1997, 2009, and 2021? Says Smithy, I believe they are all the Springbok tours, but I'm not sure whether or not there is another connection at this stage. I know the last time the Springboks lost the tour at home, it was 1997. At this stage now, it is going to be the free kick for the British and Irish Lions here at Scrum Times and not what the Springboks would have been wanting there. Why, Matty, land of the round stones and nothing else, right? <laughs> says, says CMC. Pretty much, yeah, I am from Waimati. Small town in the South Island. Not a lot happening here at this stage. But yeah, at this stage, uh, yeah, hopefully we will be able to output it on the map. Although I don't know whether or not that will happen, but now it's going to be Dialende, who is going to be inside of his own 22. I will read the chat in a very short moment. And a, uh, yeah, I will try my best to read through all of them, but we do have a huge amount of people watching. So I do appreciate every single one of you being here. Little Willie LaRue clearing that one inside of the 22 right now. We will read the chat as well. We have got four nations against one as well, says Mark Smith. And also, we have got brilliant coaching, says MJ Young. And also, in there, 2021 is now. It is indeed, says Smithy. And also, we have got the Southern Hemisphere, has always been the uh, more profici- uh, proficient sorry, at rugby. No one um, really questions that. And please, guys, YouTube took down um, all the videos, only allows audio, good commentary in English. Is from the Kiwi Lads. Uh, you are um, at the right place. Thank you very much. The Kiwi Lads says, Luke, thank you very much for that kind message, mate. It is hugely appreciated. Has, uh, yes, but Visa coming off the field now. And that is going to be actually Diaga making his way out there. So I would assume maybe he is going to be. So they're going to possibly. Who are they going to move? Mostert might go to uh, possibly playing as the number six. I think they may go with here. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it has confused me for a second, but I think he will be going into that uh, flanker role. Now it's going to be Alan Wynne-Jones looking for the offload off the line out, not quite able to find it there. But now once again, it is going to be the British and Irish lines with ball in hand. Marco Bonapola once again, making meters. Jasper Visa is going to be coming off the field, like I mentioned, and that's going to be Lou Diago who's made his way out there, making the first tackle of the match for himself already. He's only been out there 20 seconds. Now it's going to be Dan Bigger with a big bomb kick. Gone high as well. Duan Fundamurva trying to line it up here. It's been knocked back. By Chris Harris. They're now going close to the touchline. Robbie Henshaw just forced in a touch there by the Springboks. Look on your arm. Putting him under pressure. Thinking about taking it quickly. Decides against it in the end. Uh, quick and oh, it's tough and quick ball. All rugby folk uh, know it's been learnt as well. Says McBrown. And also we are um, all British, aren't we? Col- uh, con- col- Colonism. Col- col- I can't say that word at the hour of the morning, unfortunately. Sorry. And we have got, um, they, are, um, they are a scratch team. They play well together in four weeks. And Rassi Erasmus versus Nick Berry. MMA make it happen as well. I feel like Nick Berry well and truly would not want that one to be the case um, because I think Rassi Erasmus has got a lot of uh, pent up frustration perhaps against Nick Berry, which would end up with him absolutely slaughtering him in a cage, I think. But at this stage, anyone who is new, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, leave a like on this live stream. We are currently sitting on 172 likes. Let's see if we can push towards 200 with around 10 minutes left in this match. But at this stage, we are sitting 56 minutes in. Kyle Sinclair also out on the field. And Malcolm Marks making his way out there for the Springboks as well. And Vincent Cox, so they have made 
A lot of changes here, except Stephen Kitsoff still out there. That is the only change on the front row that they have not made. And we have also got in there uh, Rassi Str uh, Strategy. Put the forward 8-1. to one. Ton weight. Uh, Lion's going to sweat now as well, says MJ Young. And now Michael Mark's got the spot off the back of the line out here. Forward, these spring balls starting to move a little bit as well. Mara Toje trying to lurk in the back, but he is not going to be able to quite get there. And it is going to be a box kick once again for Faf de Klerk. Vunapolo off the field. And I have to say, good performance from that man. So far, Sinclair on the field for Furlong. And Vincent Cock going to be coming on the field for Mahalba. And also Umbunambi coming off the field for Malcolm Marks. So there are a lot of subs being made now. But as there should be, I mean, these guys had to play for a long time in that first half. Of course, the first half went for about 60 minutes. But I guess the benefit of that is the fact of having so many minutes that you are able to um, have a break. Who is your South African team? As well, says Tristan. South African side, I feel like I struggle to pick my favorite South African side in terms of the starting 15 that I go with. But I can show you guys exactly who was in the starting 15 for South Africa. If you are interested, Owen Farrell also now out on the field for the British and Irish Lions. Now, only two points difference. He uh, kicked a couple penalties in that first match, and he might be looking to do the same in this one as well. But now it's going to be Ken Owens going to be throwing this one. So he's also made his way out onto the field. They are making plenty of subs. Ali Price out there now instead of Connor Murray. And I believe now the Springboks probably have one or two extra subs on the bench, more than the British and Irish Lions, if I'm not wrong. But I could be wrong in that regard. Often am, but Fuff de Klerk now going to be passing across into the hands of Kwaha Smith. Almost his first carry of this match so far, if I'm not wrong. Uh, what is the time on the match? At this stage, we are sitting 58 minutes into this one. And it is currently 11 to South Africa and 9 to the British and Irish Lions. Taken nicely by Stuart Hogg in the year once again. Or oh, sorry, that's my pimpy, who has turned it into a more They're starting to make meters here by the Springboks. Going to be shutting this one down. And it is actually going to be... Okay. Interesting there. So it is going to be the situation of it was held up. So because of it, it is now going to be the scrum to the British and Irish Lions. Rassi Erasmus, he can't believe it there. For that decision, I didn't actually pick up in terms of what the call was, in terms of why that was the British and Irish Lions who did get the scrum. I believe it was because of the fact that it did get held up. And then in that situation, it didn't make it to ground, I assume, or something along those lines. Give fifth, um, or give man of the match to the referee, as well as MJ Young. And I mean, would accept that better, Keith, from New Zealand, although I do not take responsibility for him. But I mean, to have a Kiwi get a man of the match, I feel like is not really what you want in this situation. How much longer to go, says Michael, at this stage? We have still got 22 minutes left in this one. South African club rugby is dead. All the great players play overseas as well. And Blue Balls are my favorite. Says Tristan as well. Oh, okay, I get it now. I thought you meant as in my South African like starting lineup I would go with. But in terms of, I quite look, uh, I quite look, uh, quite like watching the Bulls as well. They have got some very talented players, and I have been watching a little bit of the Curry Cup. But then the only problem with the Olympics being on at the moment is they aren't showing Curry Cup games here in New Zealand. Just another scrum reset at this stage for the British and Irish Lions to put this ball in. We have got what call was that as well, Sister MC. I'm not too sure what the call was with the um, O'Neill equals one as well as well as Sister Snooze. But now it is going to be going high, and it is going to be taken in the air there, Anthony Watson. So it's going to be an advantage here. For the Springboks, Fifth Clerk taking that one almost quickly, but decides against it in the end. And greetings, um, Kenya representing here as well. Love the commentary. See Squeeze, thank you very much for tuning in, mate. It is hugely appreciated. You guys are being here for this live stream. And yeah, we have had a huge amount of support on this one. We've got over 600 people watching at the moment, which is absolutely incredible. And I do thank you all very much for your continued support. At this stage, we are two subscribers away from hitting 4,200 subscribers. So if you do want to help us out, Please do, but at this stage now, it is going to be the Springboks with this ball about 40 metres out from their own line. And Andre Pollard is going to be kicking this one into touch for their penalty. It is going to be another stoppage. I believe it is going to be subs, possibly, who are going to be made. Who is going to be coming off the field now? It is going to be Stephen Kitsoff, the man who has put in a shift for his 50th test match. For the Springboks here, it is going to be Trevor Nakanye making his way out onto the field now. Field position as well, so he's hanging around at the stage 40 metres out from their line here, the Springboks. And they will be kicking this one for touch, trying to get as close to the 22 as they can. 30 degrees Celsius in Manila, uh, humid, no wind as well. Electricity uh, electricity blackout as well, says MJ uh, Young. So that is no good for you, mate. And hopefully it does come back relatively soon. But yeah, at this stage, Tokyo had it about 30 degrees as well. Very hot. Oh, Stuart Hogg able to keep that ball? No, that's not going to be in because of the fact that at this stage, he had both feet out because of the fact that he did jump from outside of the field of play to then put the ball back in. And that is one of those things that they've got to make sure they have. Right, Nick Perry having a smile on the sideline. He will be happy that he is just on the sideline for this one rather than the head ref job. But Mark, um, have you got uh, it on live chat as well? Says Mark Smith uh, as well. I will just have a quick look. Um, Mark, have you got it 
Uh, have you got it on live chat? Is there another mark in the chat, perhaps, that I have um, missed at this stage? Um, but we have also got in there um, that he's uh, not just, yes, there's a rolling mall as well. Says, uh, oh, it is Mick Brown in the chat. As said, Lions go, go, go. But now it's going to be the rolling mall for the Springboks. And they are hoping to get that go forward going. And it is Malcolm Marks at the back. He is normally cool, calm and collected in this situation. They are still rolling forward here, the Springboks. Eben Edson, has got the ball off the back now. Still going here. 10 metres out. And it's gone down. And it's going to be an advantage for that one being dragged down. Now it's going to be the clerk, little grubber in mind. And it's going to be Lucanio Army puts the ball down. And what a try for the Springboks there. And that is going to be the second try of the match for them. And it was Lucanio Arm in the number 13 jersey. He deserved a try, I feel. He's been playing very well. For South Africa, um, throughout just all of the matches, he's kind of a silent assassin, I think you could say, in terms of the fact that he doesn't really get too many opportunities to put the ball down. But when he does, he does have an impact. They are just checking this one, try, 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 from Tesla and Tat. And also, we have got Rio Gamer in as well. Welcome in, mate. 5.45 here in New Zealand, early morning start, that is for sure. But yeah, I hope you are doing well, mate. And we have also got Rio Game. Um, I felt you could see it as well, says Marco Vodafone. And also, we have got Pretoria. South Africa, 13 degrees Celsius, humidity 13%. And look on your arm. He has scored the try there. And they are fired up there. The Springboks look like he almost dislocated the fingers trying to put that one down there. But it is going to be the try here for the Springboks. Or is it? Oh. It's pretty loose. It's pretty loose in the hand from that angle. But I think it is still going to be a try here. It is going to be Marius Yonka, who is in charge of the TMO. I think from that angle, he actually almost loses control a little bit, but I think it's still enough of a fingertip on it to have control of it. It's going to be a close one, that is for sure. We always got, um, yeah, I'm doing well. I'm happy with our Sevens Women's uh, stayed up last night as well. Or Slade last night, sorry. Says a real gamer. Yeah, it was pretty awesome for the Mipipi. And uh, um, at this stage, seems like he is going to be the other try scorer uh, in this situation. But they are just making sure. I feel like at this situation, if it's in the palm, it is going to be a try. But this is going to be interesting to see what they decide to go for. Do I bot try as well, says Keith. And also we have got, I wonder what Rassi puts uh, as well earlier on in the chat, uh, in the water as well. And Malcolm Marks is really good on my perspective as well. That is why I think I actually signed him in one of my uh, career modes on Rugby Challenge 4, just because he is a very talented player. And I think he can have a big impact in the later stages. Oh, that's going to be actually a tighter call than I think most people were expecting. This could go either way here. They're looking at another angle here. I think, oh, it's close. It's whether or not the ball is just touching enough of the hand to be still in control. He's still a try, says Ben okay, but it's going to be up to Marius Yonka, perhaps. They're just checking to make sure he's not offside as well. Actually, not sure, says Sir MD. I think from this angle... It is the situation of it's making me question it, but I think it is still going to be a try here. No try, says Heinrich. Okay, on-field decision stands, and it is going to be the try there for Lucanio. Um, in that one, good call, ref, and well said as well, says the snooze. Yeah, I feel like Ben O'Keefe, he has been doing a good job in this match so far. Um, aftermath of this match will be very controversial. Well, indeed, I feel like Warren Gatlin will be sitting down for an hour and given his thoughts on the refereeing of this one, and we have got Timo, it's becoming too much of a draw, uh, like soccer's fake injury tantrums, as well as his MJ Young, and also we have got, like, biggest fake soccer uh, injury antics earlier on, and also good call ref, and well said, and uh, my win by 15 looking good as well, says Chris Sierra, and also another 65-minute half, says MJ Young, it could be, we've had a lot of situations where it has been going to the TMO, I think there's about the three, or maybe actually around four or five, that has gone so far, um, avoided a video there, being as well, says Gareth Ferguson, and also we have got there, in the chat, a few teens, in the chat from uh, Katie, sorry, and um, I would give it, to, uh, I would give it to be fair, but close, yeah, I think from the first angle, I thought he had a lot more control of it, than he did, um, actually in real time, but he still did have enough, of the hand on the ball, to be able to consider it, as being in control, it was close though. That is for sure. We have got there. Gatlin is taking notes to make a video too. And thanks to MO. Says Katie. And also we have got in there. Is it a try? Says to Tristan. It is indeed. So it is a try to look on your arm. And they did get the kick as well. So, oh, that's going to be an awkward one in the air. Stuart Hogg and Cheslin Kobe. Both eyes for the ball. And Stuart Hogg is disappointed that he wasn't quite able to take that one. It's been kicked downfield. And now it's going to be in the hands of Owen Barrel. Kicks it high. Going to be chasing this one hard. And is Cheslin Kobe down once again? If he is, that is going to be very unfortunate. Because that would be the third time that he's been down in this one. And he's also been off for a yellow card. He has had a hard day at the office. That is for sure. De Klerk fires it back to Pollard just outside of the 22. 
And he kicks it for the touchline here. Looking for a bit of territory. Has bounced into the hands of Stuart Hogg now. Off the pass of Duan van der Merwe, who is chasing this one hard. It's going to be contested as they all. Oh, Andre Pollard is able to dodge the tackle of van der Merwe, but he is straight down now. And they are going to be 40 out from their own line here. The Springboks with a nine-point lead as well. The Springboks at the stage, if they score one more try, I would say that they win this game. But we will have to wait and see the game is 18 minutes left. Doesn't mean the Lions lost the versus here. They destroy a one conversion for them in this situation. Or one penalty, sorry, would mean that they are going to be only six points behind. Should have been changed, no doubts as well, says McBrown for the TMO. And also we have got there. It's not over yet, says CMC. Yes, certainly. Still plenty can happen in 18 minutes of rugby. That is for sure. With Anthony Watson kicking that one in behind, going for a bit of territory here. And it is going to be bouncing up nicely for Willie LaRue, who will be able to kick this one into touch off the right boot. So now we have got a total of 17 minutes left in this matchup. Nine points is the difference in this one between them, uh, or sorry, between the Springboks and the British and Irish Lions. They're actually making a sub as well. It is going to be fifth to click coming off the field. That is going to be for Herschel Yankees now. So I believe they have almost emptied the bench. We will look at the bench as well. While we have got another stoppage in play, but Fifth Clerk once again having a busy day. They haven't actually taken Valimza off the bench yet. And also, I think they still have Marco van Straden. So they've still got two options there for South Africa, for the British and Irish Lions. They have got Tyburn, Talupe Falatau, and also Elliot Daly. So they have still got some very good players to come off that bench. But it was a very nice ride by Lucanio Arm that they are showing there. And Fifth de Clerk. In the end, oh, yeah, he actually, oh, that's not looking too good. Fuff de Klerk, it looks like high up there, and probably a groin at that stage for de Klerk. Let's hope it's only a muscle, or else he could be out for this next match. Field position at the moment, he's hanging around at the stage. We are just going to see that it is going to be, hopefully they show it soon. I've actually forgotten where we are. We are almost on the halfway line, I believe, around 45 metres out here. For the British and Irish Lions, um, we'll go to war for Jeslin, or war with Jeslin. Guy would run um, <laughs> at the Bonsai Charge with a grenade in his teeth as well. Yeah, he is definitely a dangerous player. Oh, that's been dropped there and a knock-on advantage against the British and Irish Lions. Big mistake there because of the fact they just threw it to the front of the line-out. But now it's going to be Smith. Gives it back now into the hands of Pollard. Going back to Damien Dialende, getting a bit of a carry, but he has been shut down in this match very well by the defence of the British and Irish Lions. And that was the tackle by Sinclair. Now they're going short side into the hands of Yankees. Goes to the, uh, you, uh, the, his name, Lou De Yaga, sorry. Got all of the syll syllables around the wrong way. Now it's going to be Mapipi down the wing. And he has been tackled. Still 45 out from their own line. The Springboks here going to be Vincent Cox, his first carry of this match so far. We've had a few technical difficulties, I think, with Ben O'Keefe's microphone. is making a bit of noise at the moment. Now it's going to be Herschel Yankees kicking this one high. And it's going to be chased by Mbimpi. They're not going to contest for it, though. Anthony Watson just not getting that one right. But I believe, yes, it is a knock-on advantage. And on the halfway line, once again, they are going to have another kick in behind here. Andre Pollard going to be finding the hands. No, it's not Willaroo. Did lose his footing, and that is advantage over Stuart Hogg. Tackled up by Damian Dialende there. I will read all the chat in a very short moment, but I do appreciate every single one of you being here. If you are new, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Now it's going to be Owen Farrell kicking this one downfield here. And it's going to be finding the touchline, or is it? Yes, it does. Very good kick from Owen Farrell to make it so that it's going to be a 22-meter line out for the Springboks just out from their own line. We have what's got there. Anything can happen in the state box, fans. Uh, let's just cross our fingers as well, says Stadenkai. And also, we have got last quarter step it up as well, says Lion, or sorry, Lions, says Anthony. And also, we have got Kitty Oni in the chat. Hey, buddy, I'm hoping for British and Irish Lions to win to keep rugby interesting. Great job as well. But that's the thing. If the Springboks win this one, then we are going one-on-one. -on -one. And we are going to the third match as the decider. Um, 4.21K already, Hamish, as well. Says Cesar, yeah, we've been growing at an incredible rate. And it is because of all of you guys. And Damien Dialende, they're just not happy at all with Mara Toje. Of course, Mara Toje, he knows how to push buttons of players. That is sure. We're currently sitting on 196 likes as well. Absolutely incredible. Thank you all very much. Ben O'Keefe now has just said, we need to get this game moving, boys. We have been taking way too long. For this one, we have what's got, told you, Billy's um, that can't play for um, 120 says MJ Young. And also we have got Maro uh, needs to be, uh, be set straight on that knee to the head as well. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. They didn't go up to stairs for it, though, which I feel like is because of the fact of how much time we have had already going TMO. Holy, this keeps of viewers. There is indeed Rio Gamer. I have struggled to be able to fathom the amount of support we've had. That's going to be a cross kick there from Damien Dialende just outside from their own 22, but they did have the advantage, so now it's going back here. For the Springboks to have the kick from around the 22 line. And we have what's got their time, says Shannon's life. At this stage, we are sitting 65 and a half minutes in. And Rory Sutherland now out on the field as well. He's been out there for a while for Marco Bonapola. 
but it is one of the first times we have actually seen him, and it was the advantage against him there. Just going in through the side, and Hamish, um, will you stream the Curry Cup playoffs? I will indeed. I am looking forward to those ones. I feel like I'm going to end up changing my sleep schedule after this Lions tour is finished. I'm going to go back to normal hours in terms of the fact that when the sun's up, hopefully I will be as well. But um, it's one of those ones. All of my nights at this stage have been persistent. I've pretty much, other than tonight, I haven't slept before 6 a.m. pretty much any night, I don't think, or unless the last couple for the sevens. But other than that, it's been a it's been a tiring tour. But we have been getting through only two games to go at this stage. Only one and a half games, I should say. Malcolm Marks goes to the front there for the Springboks. And they are going to be 40 metres out from the run line. They've got the advantage as well for the British and Irish lines going a little bit too early. Now it's going to be Dialende with the step as well. Gives it to Paula. Thinking about the white ball instead. Gives it to Mapimpi, who is trying to step around the tackle of Henshaw. But he has driven him down to the ground. Once again, that has been a good battle out there. Robbie Henshaw, great in defence normally. And he has continued that. But now it's going to be Seal Khaleesi bumping off the tackle of Owen Farrell. Did he wrap his arms? We'll have to wait and see. But now it's going to be 40 metres out now. And that ball has popped free. And we're going back for the penalty to the spring box. Um, I've got any view. Oh, I've got any view as well, says Mora. And also we have got Pollard at 15, staying at 10 as well as an option. And also I'm super curious um, why um, is Big Courts um, um, covered in black ink? Um, did he get tattoos? Uh, he ended up regretting or something. I'm not too sure. I haven't actually been paying too much attention to his arm in this one, of whether or not it is actually in a pattern or anything like that. I guess from a distance, it does just look like they are just, uh, yeah, covered. And the ink, I'm sure there is a meaning behind it, though, perhaps, that we don't know about. We've also got Maro Tojas turning um, to wave his arms around in frustration. Come on, mate, as well. And also, we have got Mornay saying next week that we're going to need to kick it to win next week as well and come on lines on the chat from Adrian. But now it is going to be Mapimpi, who is making his way off the field. So Damian Vilimza is going to be making his way out there for Mapimpi, the first try scorer of this match for the Springboks. And at this stage, if you haven't already, be sure to vote in that poll as well for who you think is going to be or how many tries you think are going to be scored in this match at this stage. One to two has got 31% of the votes and then three to four has got 43. So if we get a try very soon, could certainly be well and on, well and on, well and truly on for that option. We have got Mornay Stein for sure. Andre Pollard at 12. Um, Dialende plays Red Rover as soon as he gets the ball as well. Uh, yeah, Mornay 10. As well in that situation, but now it's going to be another rolling mall for the Springboks. Malcolm Marks at the back straight away. You can see the experience that that man brings to the Springboks side. And now it's going to be Herschel Yankees goes back. Damian Dillon, they get him driven backwards in the tackle there by Curry. And also, it was uh, Ken Owens who made that tackle there going short side by the looks of it here for the Springboks. Or is he just selling it to Herschel Yankees? No, he decides to go short side and it is going to be taken there by Franco Mosto. He's still out on the field, I believe. They wouldn't be too far away. From giving it to fun starting though to be able to make its way out there it's going to be taken by watson or is it it's bouncing all over the place at this stage and it was a little knock on and that means now that the springboks are going to have an opportunity to be able to have another scrum 25 out from the line rush is a real hero here as well says jason and also we have got um bro how do you feel about new zealand keeping a woman's um oh no we can't go into that mate we have got apologies mj young says gareth and also we have got in there uh points on the scoreboard says mh Choi. and yeah at this stage a nine point difference between these two sides, it's a very heavy front row here for the Springboks on the later stages of this match. 232 kg, still the same for both. Uh, it is a both of the locks as well. And at this stage, a little bit of an advantage for the loose trio weight for it is the British and Irish Lions. Talupe Falato out on the field as well. I do see we all appreciate your change in sleep patterns to bring us the commentary as well, says Mark Smith. And yeah, I feel like it's one of those ones, like the amount of support you guys have been showing to these live streams and to the channel recently just makes it that much more motivating to keep on going. And each week, I do look forward to these live streams. It's the middle of the night. I sleep through Sunday, but it is one of those situations I have absolutely loved every second of it because I get to hang out with you guys while watching some rugby at the same time. Look on your arm with a bit of a knock on there, but it's going to be a penalty. Oh, penalty to the Springboks here. If they take on the three-pointer, that will give them a total of a 12-point lead in this one, and then it would be two converted tries that the British and Irish Lions would need to be able to get back into this one. Weird, um, he is only, or he is only like the rule sometimes as well, says Smitty, and also drop goal, says Amora, um, and also we have got uh, Russie out, Gatlin, Gatlin, uh, or Russie out, Gatlin, Gatlin as well, and we have also got in there, and come back, Bok another try, or, or come on, Bok another try, and also um, we have got in there, uh, but we appreciate your sacrifice though, says Quest, and Dialende, says MJ, um, it is MJ Young, and also come on, Bok, Says Rio Gamer Springboks are fire in the second half. Says Oliver, they have had a lot more of the territory in the second half, which I feel like is exactly what they want. And Trevor Nakanya just poking his tongue out at the British and Irish lines. There has been a lot 
of aggression out on the field there at this stage. It seems like it could be leading towards a win for the Springboks in the second match, which would mean that it is all down to the third one. And we will have to wait and see who is going to be able to get it. And we have a Scott Box matches um, Lions Thoroughness and Knox tonight, as well as his Shoy. But that's the thing. I have almost said it as if the Springboks are winning this game and they are going to win it. I mean, they are winning this one. But the question is, if the British and Irish Lions can score within the next kind of five minutes or so, this game is not over. Honore Pollardi has got that kick. And that means now that our score is going to be 21 to South Africa. And also it is going to be nine to the British and Irish Lions. Colby is quiet. Is he playing? He has ended up, he's been down about three times with injuries throughout this match. Jedlin Colby also off the field for 10 minutes as well, which may be why um, we weren't saying his name throughout the mid-card. But he still hasn't quite had that kind of out-and-out dangerous performance that everyone knows him for. But I feel like there's a lot of pressure on that man in that regard. I see the waterboy coach as well. Says on Rio game, and also we have got 10 more minutes, the final game next week. Let's go, Boca as well. Says uh, it was a Marco Bonapola bear. Now it's going to be uh, Diaga taking that one. Tyke Byrne out there for Courtney Lords as well. So last minute subs made by the British and Irish Lions. It's a bit taking the ball just outside of the 22. And he is going to be dragged down by Rory Sullen straight away. Tyke Byrne trying to counter ruck. Nothing doing though. And Herschel Young, he's going to be kicking this one high for the box kick. Once again, it's only going about five metres here. Almost taken. It's going to bounce into the hands of Mara Atoja. Now it's going to be Sinclair, who has stepped back on the inside. He's going to be tackled by Yankees, so. though. And they did go with a spear forward on the bench. But the Springboks had to use it very early with the injury of Peter Stafter Toy. And his rush defence normally against these sides is something that is very crucial for the Springboks. They haven't had to use it in this match yet, though, so far. Because of the fact that he was taken off. And now it's going to be going back on. Barrel South, a dummy. Beautiful ball to Talupe Falatau. But he is going to be taking Malcolm Marks. That's not a penalty. I think he went down to a knee there. Malcolm Marks. But he has won the penalty. I'm not sure whether I saw that the right way. But I think a knee went down on the ground there. But I could be wrong. We have got this game isn't over yet as well. Cesar Henry as well. And also Sweet Andre Sweet as well. Says Alan. And also we have got South African friend. Uh, South African fans. Sorry. Uh, flags from MJ Trailers and also Marco Afan started and making his way out. That's going to be replacing the captain, Colisi. So I, oh, I'm not actually sure who they would actually give the captaincy to while he's off the field. Would they give it? Not too sure. It's a Beth might take it. Maybe South Africa A is still the TMO, well, as well says Smitty. And also, we have got in there the line sleeping tonight, says Jeff Randall. And also, are these um, the South Africa fans dangling a carrot as well? Says Adrian, and it's a tour, says our game, and also come on, let's try it again. But I will mention once again, while we have got another stoppage, if you are new to the channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you are new. It is usually appreciated. They are just showing a replay. I will try and see whether or not my point was valid. I, you can't see it from that angle, unfortunately. I think Malcolm Marks may have been able to keep the footing there, though. And we need a kicker, says Jan Fenter. And also, um, if it's a penalty, then the game would be over, says Hanger Rat. And also, we have got in the chat. I'm not sure what this is, sorry, Moria. But I do appreciate the comment, nonetheless. Now, it is going to be Malcolm, uh, Malcolm Marks, sorry, driving forward for the Springboks once again. And this is something, the rolling mall for the Springboks has really come alive in the second half in terms of the directional play, the meters that they have been making from it as well. But now it is going to be slowed down big time. It's going to be Vincent Koch now breaking off. And he is trying to make a couple of extra meters for a side. Maro Toje staying down on the ground there. Going into the hands now of Funstarden, who is getting his first carry since coming out onto the field only a moment ago. Now it's going to be 73 minutes gone. Andre Pollard, high ball there. He's going to be chasing it himself here, Andre Pollard. And he's lining up. He's almost able to take him out. Anthony Watson does claim a little knock on from Anthony Watson first though. So now it is going to be a scrum feed for the Springboks. Once again, knock on be uh, beaches as well. Says Rio Gamer and I'm um, a New Zealand fan here. Says Rio Gamer as well. And my, uh, my wife's a Kiwi. So during the Tri Nation, she, she's the enemy as well. Says Sir MC. And also we have got the uh, seam. Uh, Gatlin won't stick uh, the referee, but or won't uh, stick the referee for dinner again. Says MJ Young. And also in the chat, we have got nice to hear the South African fans. Um, they were quiet last week, says Anthony. And of course, it does mean if they do get the win near the Springboks, the series is going to be one and one. And the third game comes down to whoever wins that one will win the series. And the last time a team that lost the first match, talking about the Springboks here, the last time a team that lost the first match of a series to win that series was in that situation of it being 1989. Three hour video from Gats as well. Thanks, Anthony. You're a responsible as well. Says Amora. And also, we have got Spring Round, uh, Springboks outrun the Lions this week. Third chase is decisive as well. And we have also out then there, um, we have got, let's see what the scrum brings, box or Lions as well. And yeah, it's interesting. So far, I would say the Springboks have had a little bit of the better at scrum time, but giving away a couple of free kicks as well in that regard. Um, so, no small screen uh, that we can see what you see, says 
410. Unfortunately, due to copyright, even if it's a small screen, YouTube take it down and we would get banned from live streaming for three months, which would mean we would miss the match next week. Also, the whole rugby championship, Bunnings NPC, the end of the year test, we would almost miss as well. So unfortunately, we are unable to show any match footage. I do apologize, but there will be highlights on YouTube after the game, which I'm sure you guys will be able to watch and decide what you thought of this matchup. Deciding on the cards as well in this match, there were two early on. How many minutes left uh, before the game ends? At this stage, we have still got a total of six minutes. That's a brilliant push from the Springboks, and that time now, it is going to be the first penalty to the Springboks, and that is now going to be three points on the cards. Tirana Kanye once again sticks the tongue out. This could be the match right here. Um, oh, that sucks, um, but I'll listen closely. Thanks for sharing. Says for Gent, yeah, I wish that I was able to show it somehow, but yeah, they would just take us straight down off YouTube, which is very harsh of them. But at the end of the day, yeah, they do not like people showing any other um, footage other than, I guess, their providers at this stage. But now we have got another kick here for the Springboks. And with this kick going over, if Andre Pola can get it, it would mean that it will be the win for, the guaranteed win, I should say, for the Springboks. And it will be all to play for in the next match. Going to be exciting, that is for sure. And hopefully you guys will be all along for the ride next week. So if you are new, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I hugely appreciate all the support you guys have been showing on the channel recently. And yeah, I have absolutely loved doing these, even though it is in that situation of, uh, yeah, it's currently 6 a.m. here in New Zealand. We have got, well, uh, good morning as well from Machi. Welcome into live stream, mate. And never write a ninja box off as well, says MC. And that one has gone over from Andre Pollard. So now the score will be 24 to South Africa, nine to the British and Irish Lions. Now Trevor Beast as well, says Gareth Ferguson. And also we have got, I wish the Lions had gone to New Zealand and rugby will always be the winner. As well, says Anthony, and also wear glasses um, so we can see the match and the reflection, says Boa. Unfortunately, I've even seen a lot of low slow streams get taken down. It may not be right at the very time, but they do take them all down in the end. Oh, look on your arm upside down there off the kickoff, but it's about doing very nicely to protect them there. Um, Polly the legendary as well, says Mora, and also the box are going into world champion mode. Says hang around, and at this stage, they will need to find that mode once again in the third test if they do want to be able to win it. It's the British and Irish Lions. Perhaps they will have a rebuilding phase. Now, got Stuart Hogg at number 15. Has been very solid throughout this match in terms of the amount of times he has been able to take the ball on the halfway line now for the British and Irish Lions. Oh, he's been lined up there. Oh, and foul by Franco Mostert, who has put in a shift out there on the field for the Springboks. Now, it's going to be Kyle Sinclair driving for once again. And it is going to be a very nice tackle. Ali Price now passing that back out to Elliot Daly. Almost hit with a swinging arm, but because he was falling down, it does mean that it's not going to be the penalty. And it is going to be the penalty to the Springboks now. But at the stage now, I think they are just going to be going upstairs. There's a bit of push and shove once again. The passion out on the field. Owen Farrell there is hanging on to Willie LaRue. We have got to take this. Um, let's take the Springboks as well. And good to be, or going to be a good game next week, says Justo. Um, everything to play for it is indeed. I uh, will be. I will be with you as well. Says Darren Kai, and that is much appreciated, guys. All of you who have been tuning in, I absolutely love your guys' support on these live streams. And yeah, we are going to be back next week. And also, we are going to have the Bledisloe Cup match between New Zealand and Australia that we are going to be covering on the channel. Also, some of the New Zealand provincial competition. Um, excellent commentary, much appreciated, says Keith. And yeah, thank you very much for those kind words, mate. But they are going to be going upstairs to see whether or not there is anything in this one to reverse the decision. It's going to be Ken Owens. Oh, it's going to be Franco Mostert with the tackle on Owen Farrell. Is there going to be another yellow card on this one? The box should kick if possible as well. Says hang around. I think they are just a little bit too far out in this situation. Oh, Franco Mostert. I just praised him for how good of a game that he has had. Did he wrap the arms enough here? Okay, it didn't end up hitting the head, so because of it, it is just play on in that situation line, giving away penalties, discipline as well. Says he might show it, and Hamish won't be able to read that, says Cole. Some of the stuff, yeah, in this situation, unfortunately, I do not know what that says, Rio Gamer, but surprising Owen Farrell didn't go rolling um, and waving his arms up, as well as says Rio Gamer. And also, thanks, Bernie. Uh, see you folks next week, says Adrian. And yeah, at this stage, that match is going to be exciting. It is going to be on at exactly the same time as the first match and the second match. And at this stage, this game has been going... Almost for the full 80, but it has been going for over two hours in terms of the uh yeah, in terms of the amount of game time that we have had with all the TMO and all the stoppages. But in this one, they're making sure that they get this one right by the looks of it. Three minutes left. Not really that bad as well. Says hanger out. Yeah, at this stage they've made up quite a bit of time in the second half. Ben O'Keefe earlier on when it was a line out, he pretty much said, Let's just speed up the game, boys. Like at this stage, yeah, just wasting time. But that one. In the end, Lucanio Army was trying to make the tackle on Elliot Daly, falling into that tackle. So that is why he ended up connecting a little bit high 
in that one. And because of it now, it does mean that it is actually going to be Slip there, so they are going back, and it is going to be the Springboks who have got that penalty now, and it will once again be Honore Polaro, I think, kicking this one for touch. I needed it. Owen to Owen. Suddenly calls out as well, says MH. Oh, sorry, that was uh, Sir MC, and also we have got, I take back what um, I said about Honore Polaro. Well done, the Springboks as well, says Thick Boy, and also we have got there. Nice to see the Bokies are happy as well in the chat. Very good. Second, yes, wishing you all a good weekend. Um, wishing you all um, for you, or wishing all for you a good weekend, and see you next week, says Sebastian. Right back at you, mate. Thank you very much. For tuning in throughout this whole live stream, much appreciated. Um, will we see a Warren, <laughs> Warren Gatlin video this week? If he does, I think it will be for the mind games rather than actually um, other than that, because there's been 15 penalties against the British and Irish Lions, almost double what they had in that last match. Springbok still getting penalised worth the 10 in this one, a yellow card for each side as well. And also we have got um, a better team tonight. Our salute as well, CCMA showing and also field position at the stage. He's hanging out on the 22, and it is going to be the line out for the Springboks. They could score themselves another try here if they are lucky. But at this stage, now once again, the rolling ball not really going anywhere. And someone's leg is well and truly really showing there uh, in the rolling ball. But now it has gone down, so it is going to be continuing here. And they are trying to shut it down. Where is the ball? It is going to be near the touchline. And it is going to be now Herschel Yankees going back across. Oh, Luta Yaga dropping that ball there cold, unfortunately for him. So now it does mean that it is going to be in the hands of the British and Irish Lions once again. And at this stage, I would think they're going to be trying to run this one out, possibly. And I was going to be on Farrell, a little chip in behind. But it is going to be Daly trying to line it up. Awkward bouncing one, but taken very nicely by Dialende on the halfway line. And the Springboks are still going to have the possession. They have had a majority of it in the second half, that is for sure. Uh, Marco, they sleep as well, says Chris. And also, I'm running my university exam while listening to this. Thank you, love from South Africa, says Charles. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully, that exam does go well for you, mate. Um, and what are you studying? Do let me know. I am interested because of the fact it would be currently evening there in South Africa, I believe, 8 p.m., if I'm not wrong. Now, it's going to be fun to move. I'm not quite able to take that one in the air. But now, oh, Ben O'Keefe almost doing the splits there with a bit of a slip. Now, it's going to be Daly on the outside. Gives it to Anthony Watson. And once again, that man has not had the ball too much. And when he does, though, he does have an impact. And that was a good run from Anthony Watson just getting just outside of the 40-meter line for the British and Irish Lions here. Or just out from it. Oh, it's going to be a clean turnover on the breakdown as well from the spring box. And now with a minute and a half left, it's going to be Dialendo kicking behind it. It's gone straight into touch there. And William LaRue is just asking what that kick was in that situation. We have it's got Woo in the chat from Rio Gamer. Also, you're an excellent commentator, mate, as well. Says Oliver. Thank you very much, mate. QT, appreciate it. At the moment, my voice is about to disappear, which is probably lucky we are right near the end of this match. We have it's got Where's Rassi? He's paying off the rest as well. Says Marco Vodopo. I do that uh, tw or eight, uh, 12 in South Africa at the moment. And great commentary, mate, says Ajesto as well. And yeah, anyone who hasn't already, be sure to leave a like on this live stream. It is hugely appreciated. All of the support that you guys have been showing on these live streams. If you are new, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well because of the fact that we are going to be back next week and also back for the Rugby Championship that will be starting up in only a month or so's time. Uh, thanks for the uh, excellent commentary as well, says Debbie. And also I'm studying my um, BBA in logistics and supply chain management, says Charles. So that sounds pretty fancy indeed. So good luck. Uh, with that career path, mate. And yeah, hopefully it does all go well for you. But at the stage now, Honre Polo going to be taking the kick here. 20 seconds left on the clock. So this may be able to wear down the rest of the time here. Five from seven for Honre Polo. 40 metres out. 71% for his kicking. Um, miss, I see 15 as well. And also we have got, thank you, really great commentary. Um, Your energy is unbelievable. Says a die as well. And yeah, that's the thing. It is very interesting because of the fact I actually tried sleeping before this live stream. It is currently six. 12 a.m. here. I got about two hours sleep, so I will still end up sleeping straight after this one as well, but has been worth it to get up for this game because it has been a very good one. That one has gone over. So the Springboks are going to win this match 27 points to the nine of the British and Irish Lions. A lot more one-sided than the last match in terms of that score sheet. It's 2-11-8 uh, Manila at the moment, says MJ. And also we have got in the chat commentary is excellent. Keep it up, says Byron. And yeah, thank you very much as well, mate. And excellent commentary from a Lions supporter in West Yorkshire. Oh, uh, sorry, Walk uh, Yorkshire. Uh, Yorkshire, my voice is gone now at this stage. Oh, it's actually well and truly trying to disappear. Um, but yeah, I do appreciate that, Ben, as well. Rassi is the best. Looking forward uh, to be watching with you in the last match. As well, says Darren Kai. And also, we have got there. Great commentary. Much appreciated. Regards from South Africa, says Leon. But yeah, I do see a whole heap of new names in the chat. And I do appreciate all you guys being here. If you are new, be sure to hit that subscribe button. My voice is about to disappear completely because of all of the uh, excitement I've had 
in this situation, we commentated the women's Tokyo Sevens a little bit earlier on. So because of it, it is that situation of the voice just doesn't want to keep on going. We have got Kiwi Lads have a nice coffee as well. Says MJ, uh, MJ Young. I think I'll end up having a nice shower and then hitting the bear perhaps convincing says Hanger. And also we have got who were the try scorers Hamish in this match. Just the two tries for the Springboks and it was Lucanio Arm and also Makasoli Mapimpi was the other try scorer in this one. Much appreciated, uh, much appreciated from a South African as well says Alan Brook. And also we have got there my predictions um, on point two tries in this game says Quest. I believe actually we had, I think it was the second most in terms of the predicted, it was around that 31% of you did predict it. So well done. 5% had zero. And for a second, did look like that was going to be the case. Sega S fella as well says, hang on. I think we will be doing a post-match review on the channel as well, though. Before the end of it, we have a, have a great weekend, everybody. Cheers and awesome stuff, Box. Says Birdie V and, um, well, my dude, you're at while talking, says lol, lol, yeah. I end up talking very quick. It is that kind of balance between commentary and also being able to read as many messages in the chat as I can because of the fact that I want to show my appreciation for you guys all being here. Um, and yeah, hopefully you have enjoyed these live streams that we have been doing. And we have got plenty more to come. Decent proper score as well, says MC. And also we have got where Stick Boy, um, Smitty, uh, Drifter, Kanakuan and Batman. We are those fellas. I'm not too sure at this stage, but we have got wonder if the third test will be a three-hour game, says MJ Young. Maybe could be going that way. Thanks, Amish. Amazing as usual, says Gareth. Thank you very much, mate. Hugely appreciated. Um, all of you guys, I've said hugely appreciate it about 100 times during this live stream, but I well and truly mean it. These uh, these live streams in the morning just aren't the same without you guys in the chat, and it just makes it that much more enjoyable for me. And, yeah, hopefully we do continue to be able to have plenty more live streams like this in the future. And you say, yeah, uh, thanks for the best commentary, mate. All the best, says Kyle, as well. And thanks, uh, chat. Thank you, Hamish, for 10 out of 10 commentary. Says Katie, and she was able to use that emoji as well. Anyone who does want to become a channel member as well to help support the channel a little bit more. It is that link in the pinned comment. It is how you become a channel member. It's five New Zealand dollars a month. So I can understand that not everyone uh, will be able to do it. But if you do want to show extra support, that is the option for these live streams. But that is the link that I've just put in the chat for that will take you to the channel membership page as well. Lines, we're awful, says Kanakuan. And also we have got enjoying the weekend or enjoy the weekend. Thanks, Gibby lads. Great game of rugby as always. Respect, says Adrian. And also big up Ben O'Quee. Oh, sorry, Ben O'Keefe in the chat from Manku. And also, no, Jenny, this time says Peter. And Honey and Hot Water Fella helps with the voice. So I think I will have to well and truly take on that advice. Thanks for your comments as well, says Gerald. And also we have got there, uh, I imagine Springboks and New Zealand forming one. That would be a dangerous sight. That is for sure. Top Dogs again, says Johan. And also we have got no red cards. For spear tackles, refs now scared of Rassi. The rant as well, says Kips. And yeah, at this stage, the Chisel and Colby one was probably 50-50 of whether or not they would end up giving it as a red card. But in the end, they did decide against it. So it does mean that it did continue. We have got Rio Gamer. It's become a member. Thank you very much, mate. Hugely appreciate it. I wish I had a way of gifting members because of the fact, I mean, the support that you showed on that live stream between Tonga and Manu Samo was absolutely incredible. But Rio Gamer has just become a member. And yeah, thank you very much, mate. I hope you do enjoy the Kieran emoji the most. That is well and true. Maybe my favorite one that we have got available. But we are, we are adding more. As we get more members, YouTube allow us to add more emojis. And we are hoping to keep on adding them that are related to the channel and that hopefully you guys will be enjoying as well. Shot Kiwi Lads, love the commentary, bro. As well, says MC, thank you very much, mate. And thank you, mate, from Siberia. As well, says Jonathan, I think you are almost our first Siberian viewer who we have had in the chat, which is pretty awesome. So thank you very much as well for tuning in, mate. And yeah, we should have a global North versus South, says MJ Young. I feel like I might actually do that on Rugby Challenge, perhaps. Could be pretty awesome. We're Kiwi Lads member. As well, says Rio Gaiman, thanks for the commentary. I'm back in Musket. From South Africa, says Joss Pike, and also Box are different. Oh, sorry, Box are dangerous. Thanks, all, says Carter, and also Gatlin will be crying now, says Peter Gills, and also thanks, Kiwi Lad, take, uh, take it easy. Says Des Crosdale, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. Razzy, the rant, 20 South Africa, seven Lions, and nine, two, oh, sorry, seven South Africa, and Lions, seven there. Oh, sorry, seven South Africa, and Lions, nine. Have a great morning. As well, says Jeffrey Fockert, I'm back at you, mate, as well. And who's man of the match, says Jermaine. I will have a quick look. And at the stage, it is going to be Makazoli Mapimpi, who was able to get man of the match in this one. And it was a very good performance from that man out on the wing. Was able to pick up the first try of the match for them. And in the end, it was Lukanyu Arm, who was able to pick up the other try for them. So very nicely done indeed. And we have got thanks, buddy. Job well done. Hope AB's inbox next week, uh, win next week as well. Um, so it has set up a month water, oh, sorry, mouth water in competition for Southern Hemisphere Union. Go rugby as well, says Kiriani. Yeah, that's the thing. The 100th test match we're going to get to see between the All Blacks and the Springboks going to be happening for the rugby championship. Can't get much better than that. 
try try in the chat from Sean Fenter, and also we have got there. Um, Makazoli is a good bloke. Says uh, it was a Marco Von Apollo here. He is indeed. Um, and we have also got in there. He what the chat is going extremely quick at the moment. Um, um, from cold and snowing in summer, better from the box as well. Says uh, Jonathan. So it is currently snowing at the moment in summer. Jeez, I don't actually know. Um, Siberia's like weather pattern, but tell you what, snowing in summer is a little bit rough. That is for sure. But we have also got their lines of dangerous. The salvage pride in the next match, third and final. Go to Rassi in the chat from Peter and Cool says for Leaf Bay. But at this stage now, I think we are almost at the end of the slice stream, and we will be uh, possibly transferring straight over to a post match review that we will do. It will probably be a live one as well, um, so that you guys can follow along with this one. But we will quickly get rid of that little uh, pop up. But yeah, thank you very much, Rio Gamer, for becoming a member of the channel. Anyone who does want access to those emojis as well, the link. Is going to be the pin comment in the chat and also that link that I just posted as well. Remember, box are getting fitter as well, says Carter Paul. And also, Kiwi Man says Chris Fender, welcome in once again, mate. Where's South, uh, South African side ever? I need a nutcase, a nutcase coach to play mind games with the Reds as well. And I bought me a new track, I believe. Oh, I can't remember what type it was, but you did mention it. Is it a Hilux? Oh, it's a Toyota something, I think, if I'm not wrong. But do let me know. Well done. As well, says Alex. And also, we have got now the TMO can walk around South Africa with one security, not 10, says Peter. Yeah, at this stage, it's going to be exciting to see how the third game goes because of the fact it's going to be all on the line between these two sides. It doesn't get much better than that, that is for sure. But if you did enjoy this live stream, be sure to leave a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you are new as well. It is hugely appreciated, the support we have had on this live stream. We are going to be going over to a post-match review in just a short while, so be sure to tune in for that as well. When we do get it up and scheduled, that will be going at about 6.30 or maybe even 6.25 a.m. I might be able to get it up by, but more than likely 6.30 will be the time that that one does happen. No red cards for Rassi now. Can't win in a fair way. As well as says Kips, and also we have got Boxer Champions World Champs. And it was a two, two, uh, 2004 Toyota Hilux and their gloss back with massive mud tires and bull bay. You'll have a lot of fun four-wheel driving with that perhaps in the future. Um, and we always got to the Lions have the ball in the second half. No, point second half. It was just... I would say, tell you what, I'm going to quickly, we are going to be talking about the stats in the post-match review, but we are also going to be looking at them very quickly now. And we do see that in that second half, 64% for the position of South Africa. That seems a little bit lower than it would have been, I would have thought. But yeah, 64% of the ball going the way of the Springboks, which is why it just seemed like they just didn't get too many opportunities at all. Also, a missed kick from Dan Bigger in that second half. But at the stage, hope for Mullen is back next week. So here's MJ Young, uh, MJ Young. And also we have got Let's Go Box. Have one. Uh, we had two choices, lose and wait another 12 years or put our hearts on the line and be heroes as well. And now it is going to be the third match. It's going to be the decider. And whoever wins that will win. The British and Irish Lions Tour of South Africa 2021 should be extremely awesome. Thank you for all um, you did for our same as well. Says KT with a 10 out of 10 commentary in the chat as well. And bought it uh, to go off-roading as a beast as well, says Rio Goma. And that's mad Rio Goma. Um, enjoy that, brother. As well, says Marco Von Apollo. But nonetheless, I do thank you all very much for tuning in. Like I mentioned, if you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And we will see you all for the next match that is going to be happening. And that is going to be... Actually, that is a lie. We are going to be back in only around 10 minutes' time for our post-match review of this one, where we are going to look through the stats, the ball... Um, or sorry, the main event of this match and also who the try scorers were. But nonetheless, I will see you all in just a very short moment. But thank you very much for watching.